posed utmost confidence in Mr. Amidu towards the fight against corruption in Ghana. In fact, he once said that Martin Amidu will put the fear of God in corrupt public offices. A position he was to hold for seven years, but about three years on at 1515 15 GMT on Monday, November 16, 2020, the man, Martin Alamisi Benz Kaiser Amidu, resigned as Ghana's special prosecutor over what he calls political interference in the independence of his office. Since then, it has become a big port of revelations and opinions all around. On the big issue today, together with our guests, we will dissect the Amidu resignation and matters arising. Thank you for choosing us. You're welcome to The Big Issue. So we'll quickly bring you a recap of what has been happening so far. On Monday, the special prosecutor resigned from his position, Martin Amidu. In a letter addressed to the president, he said his decision is to enable the president to take steps to appoint a replacement to the position as required by law. He suggested that President Akufuado has not been able to ensure his independence and freedom of action. Now, we'll take a look at uh, his appointment, some of the pertinent issues he raised over his office accommodation and also his resignation in this report. The setting up of the office of the special prosecutor was one of the key campaign promises made by President Ekufuado ahead of his election victory in 2016 to tackle corruption much more vigorously. The office was established by an Act of Parliament, Act 959, and came into existence on 3rd January 2018. The office was mandated to investigate and prosecute cases of alleged corruption under the Public Procurement Act 203, Act 63, and other corruption-related offenses implicating public officers, political office holders, and their accomplices in the public sector. The Attorney General, in a letter to the President on Thursday, January 11, 2018, nominated and submitted the name of the proposed Special Prosecutor, Martin Alamisi Benz Kaiser Amidu. Many hailed his appointment, since he had carved a niche for himself in protecting the public funds. Act 959 and the successful appointment of a spe Special Prosecutor are historic events in our modern history. The Ghanaian people have in overwhelming numbers denounced the canker of corruption. The Ghanaian people expect the office of the special prosecutor to rise to the challenge and to the occasion and collaborate with other existing law enforcement agencies to fight relentlessly and help eliminate corruption in our public life. Government laid the Special Prosecutor Regulations 2018 in Parliament in November 2018 to give effect and make the office functional. Ironically, the man who had been appointed as the Special Prosecutor cited in the Special Prosecutor Bill some possible lapses in a 25-page paper critiquing aspects of the bill. He questioned why there was a clause that sought to limit the Special Prosecutor to specific crimes. According to Martin Amidu, neither he nor his deputy has received any emolument since their appointment. Months following the setting up of the office, Martin Amidu was vocal about the lack of resources for his operations. We have set up an office. <coughs> we have to organize that office, have the requisite personnel. It doesn't take one day. My law says that 90 days after the assumption of office of the special prosecutor, pursuant legislation must be enacted. As we speak today, I have no legislation. So, I use my common sense. The law says I can coordinate with other organizations. So I coordinate with the Auditor General. I coordinate with Yoko. I coordinate with other anti-corruption bodies. So I have to find a way by which we can begin to work towards the ultimate end. The 2019 budget statement allayed the concerns observers had with respect to funding of the special prosecutor. The office was allocated the sum of 180 million cities ahead of 2019. Martin Amidu started work with legal processes against the Boko Central MP Mahama Yariga. 
he accused the former minister of tax evasion in the clearance of vehicles and illegal transfer of foreign exchange from Ghana to Dubai without having the required license to undertake such transaction. While investigating Mahama Ayariga, he was hit with a suit from the former Deputy Attorney General, Dominic Aini, over his eligibility to hold such an office. Dominic Aini contended that Martin Amidu, being 66 years of age, was too old to hold public office under which the Special Prosecutor's Office falls. He argued in his writ that any other interpretation would result in an unlawful amendment of Article 199 of the Constitution by legislation. Using the same sections of the Constitution, he held that no person above the age of 65 years is eligible for employment in any public office created under Article 190 Clause 1. After a careful review, the Supreme Court in May 2020 ruled that Martin Amidu was eligible to hold such a public office. Perhaps one investigative piece that also got many talking about the office was his corruption assessment report on the Japan Royalties deal. The report recommended that the deal be reviewed and sent back to Parliament for proper scrutiny. It also said that a process of selecting the transaction advisors was flawed. Days after the report, the presidency also issued a statement asking the finance minister, Kendall Furiata, to resend the deal to parliament as suggested by the report. Besides its weedy environment currently encroached upon by these mechanics for their extra vehicles, the facility looks old and abandoned. The floor and indeed every surface in this facility are covered with heavy films of dust and cobwebs. The tiles are fast decaying while the ceiling shows signs of rot. The electrical meter I see here has broken down and the wiring is totally out of place. These walls constructed within the building indicate an unfinished project. The facility has about 15 rooms for office space, one conference room, store rooms, eatery and washrooms. A nauseating smell hits me on every floor. I find out later it emanates from behind the building as I see evidence of open defecation. The 10-story Get Fund building, which is a sprawling, huge edifice in the heart of Accra near the Parliament House for use. That building was supposed to be occupied by the GET Fund. Subsequent to that, the president ordered for the building to be given to the Office of Special Prosecutor for use. It's been several months since the announcement was made, but nothing has happened. At least the Special Prosecutor has not moved in. The building itself is near the yet-to-be-built National Cathedral, and they missed the demolition by the whiskers. It shares a boundary with Parliament House. The background of the compound looks very serene, beautiful car park. Lights have been properly fitted and minor works are ongoing as sand and gravel and stones can be seen at the underground. Water has been connected, electricity has been connected, and the two standby generators would be powering the facility in the event of a blackout. Quick issues that we have identified that have led to the uh, non-completion of this building. First, uh, the lift has been talked about. It's not functioning, so if you're working in this building and you wanted to use the, go to the, any floor, you'd have to walk and pant and sweat like I'm sweating. There is an issue with air conditioning, and is the reason again I'm sweating. The air conditioning, I'm advised by people working on this building, is not completed yet as we speak. Now, there's a third and very important issue, which has to do with an engineering defect that is being fixed. Um, now, there is a gap that is between the building, which has to be sealed of a sort. We have set up an office. <coughs> we have to organize that office have the requisite personnel, it doesn't take one day. 
My law says that 90 days after the assumption of office of the special prosecutor, pursuant legislation must be enacted. As we speak today, I have no legislation. So I use my common sense. The law says I can coordinate with other organizations. So I coordinate with the Auditor General. I coordinate with the local. I coordinate with other anti-corruption bodies. So as to find a way by which we can begin to work towards the ultimate end. I have warned that if most of these things were not done by the middle of this year, then this office may not be able to be seen to be doing its mandate by middle next year. Because by middle next year, you are in election year. If I arrest somebody, you will turn up and look at it. Which party does he hold the insurance card from? Right? Because criminals now have taken political party cards. So when you arrest him, he will flash his political party card. And his political party will come, oh, no, no, it's because he's our member. And I've won. If we have to do it, we have to do it during this lean season. As of now, you don't have a viable office that can do that. According to the statement released by Martin Amidu after his resignation, he indicated that in undertaking the analysis of the risk of prevention of corruption and anti-corruption assessment, he sincerely believed that he was executing an independent mandate under the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act 2017. Now, quote, the reaction I received for daring to produce the Ejapa Royalties Transaction Limited anti-corruption report convinces me beyond any reasonable doubt that I was not intended to exercise any independence as the special prosecutor in the prevention, investigation, prosecution, and recovery of assets of corruption. My position as the special prosecutor has consequently become clearly untenable. End of quote. The statement explained that, quote, he accepted the offer on 10th January 2018 to be nominated to be special prosecutor because Mr. President and Ghanaians knew that I have been an anti-corruption crusader all my life and not an anti-corruption entrepreneur. This explains why I have never put the emoluments and benefits of the office as central to my commitment and my passion for the establishment of an independent, effective, efficient and impartial anti-corruption office of the special prosecutor before the end of the first term of Mr. President. This has not been possible for several reasons. The statement added that, quote, the events of 12 November 2020 removed the only protection I had from the threats and plans directed at me for undertaking the Ejapa Power Realities Limited Transactions Anti-Corruption Assessment and dictates that I resign as the special prosecutor immediately. Fear is the enemy of change and I am prepared from the vacuum created on 12 November 2020 to meet the threats of my demise as the price to pay for serving my country without fear or favor, affection or ill will. I acted professionally throughout the discharge of my duties and my conscience is the anchor of my strength to face any consequences. I am grateful to every Ghanaian for both the support and criticisms during my tenure. When the real facts of my tenure become well known to the public in the future, History may judge me kindly. Ghana first, the statement. All right. So subsequently, the president uh, accepted Martin Amidu's resignation on Tuesday, uh, November 17. And it was a statement signed by the chief of staff, Akosia Frema Ose Opari. I'll just read that statement. That was a very short statement. So it says, uh, this is to acknowledge receipt of your letter, data 16 November 2020. Uh, addressed to the President of the Republic, conveying to him your decision to resign from your position as a Special Prosecutor, which he has accepted. The President has taken due note of the other matters raised in your letter, and the government will issue a statement responding to them in due course. The President has directed me uh, to ensure that all emoluments and benefits due you under law are paid to you accordingly. The President thanks you for your service uh, to the state and wishes you uh, the best in your future endeavors. It was signed by the Chief of Staff, as I mentioned earlier, Kusia Frima Ose Opari. And that uh, subsequent statement, we have it, is among the issues we'll be talking about. But before that, the Ministry of Finance also came into play. And
they refuted claims by the former special prosecutor that government did not adequately resource the office to discharge the duties. Uh, in the resignation letter to President Ekufuado, Martin Amidu alleged that the office of the special prosecutor was denied the needed funds to work. In a budget performance report released by the finance ministry detailing budgetary allocations made in the year 2018 to 2020, it says the inability of the office to initiate transactions on the government's integrated financial management information system gift mix platform led to the non-release of the funds. Now here are excerpts of that report the finance ministry issued. The former special prosecutor Martin Amidu had made public declarations about the under-resourcing of his office and how that was hampering the discharge of his duties. Responding to the comments and showing the trends in budgetary allocations and releases to the office of the special prosecutor between 2018 to 2020, the finance ministry indicated that the year 2018 recorded the lowest allocation of 3.7 million cities. They attributed it to the fact that the office had been freshly established and that their allocation formed part of the 2018 budget of the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's office. In 2019, the Finance Ministry indicates that a little over 180 million cities was approved, out of which 65.6 .6 million cities was released. Also, an amount of 63.1 million cities was released as of November 16, 2020, when the special prosecutor tendered in his resignation. The report concludes that one major challenge identified during the implementation of the budget within the period 2018 and 2020 is the Office of the Special Prosecutor's inability to initiate transactions on the GIFMIS platform to facilitate the release of funds. Right, so those are the issues there. Uh, we'll be delving into them. Every single piece of it. The, there are different facets to this whole conversation about uh, the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, his resignation and other matters arise. And let me introduce my guests who have joined me in the studio. Ni Papo Samwa uh, is a, a legal practitioner and also a member of the NDC. Hello. Oh, Good to have you. Yes. <laughs> lovely uh, morning to your listeners and viewers. Mm. Um, uh, good morning to uh, my presidential, incoming president, President uh, Bahama. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish him well wherever he is campaigning. Mm. These are the last days. Mm. And, uh, He's in the Ashanti region. Yes, I know. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult terrain, but um, we are praying and hoping for the best. Okay. Uh, Yao Pong, a private legal practitioner, has also joined us in the studio. Good to have you. With no party. <laughs> 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 yes, with no party. <laughs> Let me just also um, appreciate the presence of my good friend, mm. possibly the uh, petty attorney general. Oh, no, 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 uh, former, yeah. Yeah. former president yeah. and unfortunately an auntie of mm. mine as well. So today is a side Yeah, it's a double dose for us. But Triple dose actually. Yeah. We mm. must work. So we are here. Okay. Uh, and uh, we may have to abandon all that and, mm. and do and do justice to the subject. We are glad you, 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 you give us your time. Yes, yes, yes. Um uh, we'll be joined by Franklin Kujo, president of Imani Africa via Zoom. And also, we are looking forward to having Dr. Kujia Asante, Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement at CDD Ghana. I must say that there's no representative from the MPP or government here because uh, they have refused to comment on matters relating to uh, the special prosecutor, his <laughs> resignation, and other issues thereof. So that's that's all we have here. Uh, you can join us. Our WhatsApp number is 0549-986-996-0549-986-996. Or you can tweet at us on Twitter, City973. The hashtag is the big issue, and we will delve into it. So let's begin, gentlemen. Yes. Ni, I'm sure you've had the opportunity to comment about this resignation or oh, even... Not comment, but mm -hmm. read and... Um, and um, I must say, um, 
I'm sad. Um, if you look at the the bipartisan support mm -hmm. that um, greeted uh, Martin Abidu's appointment, and you, if you if you if you recall his votes when the matter got to the floor of the, of yeah. the house, it was a unanimous decision. Yeah. So from his vetting, even the, the, from the creation of the office, mm -hmm. you understand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Even though the minority had certain legal issues with respect yeah. to the fact that we could, whether we could split the office mm. uh, from the Attorney General's office, there has been a general consensus that if we want to fight corruption and we want to make it an apolitical fight, then we need a dedicated office that is resourced and that is focused and that is manned by a person or persons who are insulated from our day-to-day -day political, you know, um, um, influences mm -hmm. and who are prepared to decisively deal with the issue. So, in support of the president's own political um, campaign and promise that he was going to tackle corruption in a different way, novel from whatever we have had in existence because we've had institutions yeah shark has been in in, in existence mm -hmm. and i must in the face of this credit justice emil short for the mm -hmm. pioneering role he played in the establishment of the shark he mm -hmm. was the first commissioner it was started off with the same problems with lack of office space or whatever but if i look at the track record of mr amidu and i look at his own as well mm -hmm. clearly you could say that fighting corruption is not an easy fight. Because if you remember, his, in his time, uh, President Rollins made the first reference as president of his appointees to him mm. for, you know, an investigation. investigation. And virtually that catapulted the Shraj, you know, um, office into one that we all applaud and acclaim. So there was a bipartisan support for the creation of the office. Mm -hmm. And when Matiamidu's appointment was made, from across the political divide, there was a belief that, look, if we would walk the talk, if we would give him the needed support and, and the promise of, um, of, of non-interference and what have you, mm -hmm. then he is the best person. Because this is a man that has fought with his own party. Yeah. He has a consistent record of not being prepared to succumb to interference so he alleges that for example he caused an investigation or he was investigating the then sitting vice president mm. and part of the reason and in fact his disagreements with the uh, uh, president, Pre Mills. Pre president Mills were part of the reason why he was fired mm. so this is someone that and even post um his dismissal from office as mm. uh Attorney General, General. No, he, he was the main, the main well, one. Yes, well, mm. General. He then went to uh, court on his own mm. on certain landmark cases yeah. that have become local classics when it comes to issues of um, uh, retrieval of, of uh, public uh, monies and uh, monies that have not been approved by parliament, blah, mm. blah, blah. So he has credentials when it comes to fighting corruption. And so when you made such an appointment and you had such bipartisan support, mm -hmm. we felt from our side that the president had put a stake down. He had, he had made a mark that, look, I am going to fight corruption in a different way. I'm going to set up this office and I'm going to make sure that this office functions and functions well. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of political uh, capital that he had put down. And so... I was, and from, from my, my party's point of view, there was a lot of disappointment that mm -hmm. if you have put such political capital in such a person, invested all these uh, 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 campaign uh, promise and, mm -hmm. and, and all that you have said you are going to do in fighting corruption, why accept his resignation? Because here, what was his complaint, basically? His complaints were alleging that you were interfering with his office. Mm -hmm. But I will go into the details of, mm -hmm. of his complaint. But that you were, you, there was a report he had authored. There were certain findings that he had made. Those findings, including findings that dealt with your office as president. 
a lot of people seem to forget that one of the key things that Martin Amidu said in his resignation letter was that, and I quote, more importantly, Your Excellency, mm -hmm. and this is on page two, Your Excellency was acting as a judge in your own course in usurping my functions to take independent follow-up actions on the anti-corruption assessment report. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. What is that? To an observation of the anti-corruption assessment to you, that negative anti-corruption assessment had been made against the conduct of your office mm -hmm. in the procedure adopted in granting executive approval. So his report was not just indicting uh, 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 officers that, uh, like the, the minister for ministry. finance, it was actually indicting the office of the president as well. You understand? So having been made, having made an allegation mm -hmm. against your office as well, the president had a unique duty. You understand? To have asked, to have refused to accept Martinamidu's appointment. Mm. And resignation. Tell, yes, resignation. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Resignation. My, my apologies. To have refused to accept his resignation mm -hmm. and to force him to do his work. Because you cannot make accusations against his office. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they had a meeting, allegedly. And Martinamidu too has a problem. Because if you have submitted a report and you say you were going to do follow-up, mm -hmm. why are you to the meeting? Yes, out of respect. Yes, the president has called you for a meeting. But you can refuse. You can assert your independence and say, I will not go to the meeting. And that I'm going to do follow-up investigations. And okay. basically, because I'm going to do the follow-up investigations, and I am indicting your office as well, I will not meet with you. You understand? Because he accuses the president of interfering with his work mm -hmm. and attempting to, 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 to manipulate the, the, the investigations to a particular conclusion. And so as to ensure that his uh, his appointees and himself were were protected from possible hmm. uh, 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 investigations and uh, prosecutions in the future, because he says he was he, he potentially mm -hmm. he had made certain findings which he believed necessitated or necessitate future the investigations. investigations. And he indicts the president himself as part of the persons to whom he may possibly open. Uh, investigations into or the president's office if you want to separate the president from his hmm. office in respect of this okay so those are my those are some of the things that i feel look if you have invested all this political capital mm -hmm. and your special uh, uh, prosecutor had made a report that indicts or potentially indicts some officials including your the conduct of your office because the executive approval was not signed by mm. the president but of course it was done in his name you clearly would want to give the public the opportunity because some of the things he complains about his building mm -hmm. and all those things those administrative things that could easily have been cured so your, your main thing is the alleged interference the alleged that the point i'm and making so he that shouldn't have accepted he the resignation have accepted it because okay. if you if you have made a commitment to the people of ghana mm -hmm. that you are going to fight corruption. and remember i always say this fighting corruption by prosecuting your political opponents is the easiest way of fighting corruption if you come into office and you then set up the investigative bodies to review every contract, every uh, 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 appointment, everything that has been done by your predecessor mm -hmm. in an attempt to look for faults, obviously you would get persons who have misconducted themselves one way or the other. Okay. But the most difficult way to fight corruption is when you are supposed to prosecute your own members. And look at the track record of this of this. Um, of this fourth republic. President Kufu was on record to have prosecuted one of his ministers. Bala Misa. President Mahama has prosecuted his appointees. This particular president has not prosecuted a single, not even one, one appointee of his who has been accused out of more than, let's say, and I have a list, about 136 allegations. So this was an opportunity that the president should have taken as being one that he should have allowed Martin Amidu, you understand, to have gone ahead independently okay. to make whatever investigations that he would have made. We will go into the responses the president right. gave to uh, the concerns uh, Mr. Amidu raised. But um, let me take your initial comments. Then we'll hear an interview uh, Martin Amidu granted my colleague Umaru Sanda Amadu. And then we'll have uh, Dr. Kujasan to join us. So we, we get to continue. Well, it's been a very long week. 
but we are here. Mm. Um, I, I mean, unfortunately, in um, even my submissions, uh, we have to find myself in disagreeing mm. or agreeing as it may be with my friend. First of all, I do not think that the president has the power to refuse a decision of any employee of the state who decides that he is no more interested in working for the state. Mm. Oh. No employer has the right okay. to compel another to work for him or her or it. Mm -hmm. Neither does any worker have the right to compare an employer mm -hmm. to keep him in his employment. But there are instances people exactly. say, I think there's, you should have precedent. a rethink there's of precedent. your no. There's a lot situation. Of precedent. No. There's a lot of no. precedent. No. no. My point is that mm -hmm. the act which mm -hmm. I have here okay. provides that resignation is one of the grounds on which the office of the special prosecutor may become vacant. Mm -hmm. Section 13, it's here. But it must be accepted. It doesn't have to be accepted. But you can't resign on your own. This doesn't have to be accepted. Nobody can compel another to work <laughs> for him. That is a basic principle. To amount to enslavement and forced labor. So, and the letter by Mr. Amidu mm -hmm. was not an offer or um, a desire to resign. Okay. He even made it clear that he would have, he would have done it earlier. But for the fact that he had to properly hand over. So you think his mind was it made is, up? This, mm. No, it is a decision that has been taken by a, an employee mm. of the state, and no one has the right. I completely disagree with that. Oh, yes, yes, I, that's I, fine. You made your point. Let, let, let I him make his point. I didn't notice that in doing so, I may have to disagree <laughs> yeah. with you on certain points. Mm. And so, in the same way, if the president had decided I would not accept your power. I would, uh, I would say that that would be a violation of the right of the worker. But in any case, people will also have said that, oh yes, why is he compelling Amidu to, to do... You think, you think Mr. if Mr. Amidu wanted to give the president the option, if he had any option at all, mm -hmm. to decide whether to accept or not, he would have couched his letter in this way knowing how meticulous and very intelligent in these matters he made it very clear. Resignation of appointment as special prosecutor, section 13, 8, and 10 of the mm -hmm. of, of the Act, and also 143, 1453 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. He has I am resigning my position as special prosecutor with immediate effect. With immediate effect. So that is the first point I want to make. Now, also, I think there's also a fundamental matter here. Mm -hmm. We have, a lot of us have, um, or a lot of people have, as it were, fused the office of the special prosecutor with the special prosecutor. The act did not establish special prosecutor. Mm -hmm. It established the office of special prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And so over time, I have tried not to personalize the office in one person. <laughs> I have tried not to personalize the office in one person. Mm -hmm. When you go to the act, section two, section three of the functions, section, okay, so you go on to uh, the mandate of the office, mm -hmm. except as otherwise provided in the constitution. The office is not subject to the direction or control of a person or authority mm -hmm. in the performance of the functions of the office. We are not here making any reference to the special prosecutor as an individual, because the special prosecutor is established or his appointment is personal to um, the, the following sections in the act. So functions of special prosecutor, section 14 is there. Mm -hmm. Now, nomination of special prosecutor, section 13. These are in specific reference to the individual called mm. the special prosecutor and not the office. And this is very important. Section 14 says the special prosecutor is accountable to the board in the performance of the functions under this act, mm -hmm. it's accountable to the board, of which he is also a member. 
or uh, as we understand there is a new one or an acting person <laughs> she is accountable <laughs> to the board so but it says in all fairness death by subsection one which i just read mm -hmm. the special prosecutor shall have full authority and control over the investigation initiation and conduct of proceedings under subsection one of section three that notwithstanding the special prosecutor is subject to the board of the office of the special prosecutor mm -hmm. so let us as much as we can try not to personalize it as if the office of the special prosecutor is the same as the special prosecutor that is not the case uh, how how has that uh, played out in this conversation it played out because if you went, went, when i listen to my uh -huh. friend mm -hmm. It, it was as if the office of special prosecutor is the same as special prosecutor <laughs> with all due respect <laughs> and that is how i have had cause mm -hmm. to even also mm -hmm. disagreed with the way the government went about choice of location or accommodation mm -hmm. or office mm -hmm. and i've had cause to also wondered why mm -hmm. in all these the board to whom the special prosecutor is accountable, mm -hmm. did not play any role at all. Or at least we were not told. In fact, there is information, if it's credible, mm -hmm. that the chairman of the board says they were not even aware of the decision. Yeah, uh, she spoke to Bernard Avla on the point of view and confirmed that. Fantastic. And if you are accountable to, to another, mm -hmm. in whatever form, and when these things were going on, mm -hmm. And the board is made up of fantastic personalities from specialized institutions. It is institutional representation. The police service, the audit service, Iyoko, FIC, all these corruption investigation um, related, mm -hmm. and for even more importantly, a woman who may not be a representative of any other institution. Mm. And I think the child person is yeah. that, that personality who, who was nominated, not because mm. she was a member of any institution, but mm. because she is a woman. And it is for a purpose. And, and so if all these things went on, dealt with special prosecutor, as if his accommodation and offices are for him alone, we all have been very so much unfair to even Mr. Amidu. Mm. So, oh, oh, so I'm making it uh -huh. Hold your thoughts. Hold your thoughts. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to calm down. Um, oh, let's, 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 let's listen to this interview uh, my colleague Omar Sanda Madu had with the special prosecutor where he sought to clarify certain things after a statement that was made by uh, Assistant Central MP Kennedy Japon uh, in relation to his resignation and other issues. Well, the allegation is coming for from uh, an incredible source, a person who has lost all credibility as far as truth is concerned. I mean, Kennedy and your phone is known in Ghana as somebody who speaks life at any person of integrity who tries to fight corruption. So I am not surprised that he was took that low, you know, to make accusations without any foundation in fact or in truth. I have never been to Germany on any occasion. Let, I mean, for a medical checkup, I don't know any German hospital or any German clinic, and therefore, his allegations are false. He, he said he, that he this has, he, he has documents on me having gone for medical treatment in Germany. He should produce them because my passports are available. I have not been to Germany. Indeed, I don't know Germany, let alone to go for medical treatment. The whole of my China from the TNDC in 83 to when I left office on the 19th, I did not have the opportunity to visit Germany let alone to visit the medical facility. I, mean, I don't know why a simple matter of a Japa realities limited transaction over which I conducted an anti-corruption assessment under law should lead to all these lies being told about me. Yesterday it was that I used an order to speak up to 
be funny. I've never had a plan in my life. I've never entered an office pickup in my life. I had my own pickup and I never found with it. So what is all this life? Simply because somebody has performed a professional duty and responsibility. Please, I have said since I left office that I was not going to give any press interview. So that's just uh, a shorter version of that interview uh, Sander had with uh, the former special prosecutor, Martin Amidu. Let me welcome Dr. Kujua Santi, Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement at CDD. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you've been listening to our conversation. Mm -hmm, yes. Let me just take your initial comments mm -hmm. on the resignation, the reasons assigned for it. Are they tenable? I still have some time. Uh, yes, you, 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 <laughs> you, 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 you get your time. Yes, I'll, 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 you I'll, yeah. get your time. You get your time. It's just a lot of time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you like you that. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's, 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 it's disappointing news. Um, but, you know, I, I have been intimately involved with the, the creation of that office mm. and the drafting of the law. Okay. And then, of course, the attempts to operationalize the office. Mm. So uh, some of these matters, as they've come out, I prefer to sort of separate them. Okay. Uh, there's the immediate or what precipitated uh, Mr. Amidu's uh, decision to resign, mm -hmm. which uh, in his letter to the president uh, alleges the interference of mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. uh, in stopping him from pursuing uh, further investigations on the Japan Realities deal. And then some allusion to death threats, yeah. uh, which I think is um, uh, attempted to expatiate in subsequent interviews. Mm -hmm. So I think that those matters have been treated separately. Then there are the issues around the operational challenges mm -hmm. um, and the board's role, which I think also have to be uh, dealt with uh, separately. Um, and I think. Uh, there is a people need to understand some of the legal engineering that went into the 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 the, the legislation that uh, governs the special prosecutor's office to understand some of the design intentions mm -hmm. that were put in place because you have to know that criminal uh, prosecution is the exclusive uh, mandate of the uh, attorney general yeah. And it's only under Article 88.4 where she can delegate mm -hmm. that responsibility. So in the Act, you cannot um, proceed to set up an office that delegates that power without acknowledging the uh, Attorney General's powers. That's why it's the Attorney General that nominates the Special Prosecutor mm -hmm. before the President's appoint. There were two other things that were introduced in the design mm -hmm. uh, based on history and, and some of the challenges we've had with these kinds of offices. One was the board. So you can't get away from uh, Article 190 in the establishment of any public agency mm -hmm. without setting up a governing board. It's a constitutional requirement. And both Article 190 and Article 195 uh, gives the president certain authorities to make appointments and so on. Mm. The president can delegate that to the board, but that has to be in written uh, form. And so some people ask about why do you need a, a board? Uh, the, the, the simple answer to that is that uh, you can't get away from that um, if you want to set up any public agency, unless you change the constitution. But to kind of mitigate some of the challenges you may have with the board and and the independence of the special prosecutor and so on. The board was basically made as a coordinating board. That's why the composition of the board is very um, particular, mm. that it has to do with agencies already uh, within the same sector that are supposed to work collaboratively with the uh, special prosecutor. Um, and the law is very clear, so even though mm. The board, the, the special prosecutor is accountable to the board in terms of the running of the office for the, the, the specific mandate of prosecutions, initiation of prosecutions and so on. 
it's that they are the special prosecutor is independent mm -hmm. in that respect but it's a fine line and some of that is where we've seen you know and later on when we get to talk about the boss role mm. and whether you know some of these matters came that there has always been a fine line okay between operational in independence you know that the, the operations how the operations affect the independence of the special prosecutor mm. and when you have a new office those two responsibilities those the actors who are implementing it are quite careful how you know they they pursue uh their various mandates mm. so as i said we'll get into some of that so All right. i think it's important to sort of understand mm -hmm. uh some of the things that inform the setting up and how it has played out mm -hmm. and then maybe to reflect and see that going forward what it is that we should keep what are the things that we maybe we should you know have a different uh, take on mm. uh, to improve you know the the functioning of the office okay of course the conversation will uh, look at the future of mm. the office of the special mm. prosecutor lessons that to be learned uh, going forward uh, franklin kujo has joined us via zoom good morning franklin good morning Abina. good morning dr santi good to see you uh, and other panelists as well okay um uh, Let's take your initial comments. Uh, we spoke to you when news of his resignation broke. And all the matters that have arisen subsequently, was it as deep as you expected them to be? Oh, I expected much deeper. In fact, we've not even delved deeper at all. There are many, many, many bills to be lifted. Oh, yeah. Because from the very narrative of uh, Amidu, um, if, if somebody dares him, he's going to spill the beans and then uh, slide it out in the public domain. I mean, he used the word wash out, that's uh, I, I'm now beginning to understand that it was not just the Japan thing that really caused this man to exit, but there's more to it. And um, even though we can conjecture, we can read it between the lines, really. I mean, if this person comes out to say, most of what you said in terms of rebuttal, his letter are false, are false and lies, and that if he's pushed, he'll come out and he was their dirty leading outside. Hmm. Um, uh, we should expect the worst if this banter continues, really. Um, it is also wise that the presidency has decided not to. Well, they've said they'll just issue one statement and not respond again. Um, how the party handles the issue is also another crucial matter. But I must say that, yes, Amido pointed the middle finger to the, to the appointor. And in this case, um, almost all the very, almost, almost all the very, uh, the whole essence of the corruption fight uh, crumbled when the king himself was aimed at and he fell. In this case, I'm talking about Amin. So I'm not entirely surprised. Uh, I'm more worried that there are other things that we do not know, um, but for which until Amin is pushed, we'll get to hear. But in terms of the optics of it, really, I mean, I, I was mortified by the, by the, should I call it the, 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 the letter I made wrote. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, some people can say that he was, he was probably too independent for the office. And maybe mm -hmm. his independence was not explained to him properly. But knowing who he is, he's been a former attorney general and understand the law. Yes, maybe he may have gone overboard and may have been over zealous all about his independence. Mm. But I think he, he can also discount the fact that if he saw <laughs> a, an indicator light on the spanner on the new car, that showed that the tires were deflated. <laughs> um, presumably, what it meant was that he could have just said, oh, change it for me. But now the person who provided the vehicle is saying, oh, but that was just a tire that was flat. Someone like Amidu is obviously paranoid in, the, in terms of the work he does. His morris, everything about him is to be paranoid, is to be mm. suspicious. If, if that probably does the work, he mm. may trust, but he, he needs to verify all the time. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that I think the board was a waste of time. Um, you see, when this whole thing was set up, before it was set up, I, I, I don't know if I may, you heard me the last time I spoke to Bernard and uh, um, the other lady. Yeah. I said, mm -hmm. when the, this government took office, we did the paper, Imani did the paper. If you Google, you see, see it right now. 
fighting corruption and waste begins at the office of the president. In fact, the office of the president is part of the office of government machinery. And we said, you know, the nature of crimes that the special prosecutor was coming to deal with are crimes which may be committed or will be committed by politically connected persons with a lot of access to power. Otherwise, they will be elites in deeper pockets. So by the time you are finishing one case, if you don't take care, it will last you the life, the, the, tenor, the tenor of your of your reign, of a particular government, and probably more, because the counter lawsuits and the rest would come in. So somehow people were beginning to ask, and we didn't imagine, we asked ourselves, mm. well, maybe knowing the president, the president is faced fidelity to his word, uh, and I want to believe that the president meant well when he established the office. Um, but we were of the view that, you see, uh, you cannot just be erecting structures along the way dealing with a matter that is as natural as sin, as natural as on the day we're born to the day we die, and that unless the rules are applied effectively, no amount of institutional structures that you create would, would help the cause. I think we all misunderstood what the independence of the special prosecutor was. Maybe we understood we? it as well. Mm. Ah, well, because of what is panning out, it looks as if uh, maybe from the presidency, from the government side, they felt that, well, I mean, this was going to be a standalone, but had forgotten that very soon um, the strictures of public office, the strictures of a political, you know, environment where mm -hmm. you you must have a master, whether you like it or not, will be our master. And where you have a, an, a, a, a very interesting human being like uh, Matia Midu, who will behave like, uh, well, like uh, when it's the fish that comes out of water, it's not comfortable. It will definitely strive to go back to the water. So you had a, you had you had Amidu on one hand, who is a fearless, you know, um, also quite an adjunct provocateur, but at the same time, his integrity is just so much intact. Mm. Of course, I took aim at him when he did this one-liner in the Japan deal uh, that suggested that Officer Government Official One was Muhammad, and I said, why did he spend all this time? five, six months, not giving us a single report, and then finally did that. You see the presidency used that against him, even though mm. it was politically convenient at the time he made that, those comments. Yeah. So a lot of this means that you must have a part, you must have some grandfather, uh, whether you consider yourself as independent or not. But mm. I'm worried about the board. You see, these boards that we keep creating, they are <laughs> limiting, they, they, I mean, for it's, not every, it's not every institution you need to create a board. I never okay. understood what the special prosecutor will have a board. Mm. Dr. Asante will give us some clarity into that uh, since he was part of the entire process from the beginning. Uh, but uh, I want to give you back your time. Oh, oh right. Oh, <laughs> Lawyer yes. Paul. Yeah, so you were talking about how we need to set aside the human being from the institution. And it's the human being we've been talking about. Yes, because it's not I who. Um, have decided to make that point. The act itself separated mm. the establishment of the office from the establishment or the appointment of a person mm -hmm. to hold the office and also another a whole provision on the deputy to assist the, the, the person. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm saying that if you look at the functions of the office, mm -hmm. okay, investigate and prosecute cases of alleged or suspected corruption, corruption-related offenses, investigate and prosecute allegations of corruption, investigate and prosecute alleged or suspected corruptions, recover man and manage proceeds of corruption, and all that. This is the function of the office. Of course, there is mm. the special prosecutor mm -hmm. who is a member of the board of the office mm -hmm. and he is a member of the office then as i said he has his deputy okay and so the the impression that unfortunately maybe because of the desire to get this whole corruption canker done with finally or reduced to the minimum mm -hmm. has maybe invariably led us um intuitively if you like mm -hmm. to assume that it is only just one person who, like an attorney general, even an attorney general is an office. 
That is why during transition, some lawyers have taken the point that if there is no attorney general, it's not correct. then prosecution cannot be done. It's but the, over time, the, 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 the law, that position was is incorrect because the, the the act establishing the legal service makes the solicitor general the acting no, attorney. No, that's what I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that over time, the yeah. courts have had. I mean, it's even it's, 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 it's even unreasonable. Yes. But well, the courts have had. It. But lawyers have still made it's, this point. It's, but it's it's it was very out of ignorance. But but the, 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 but, the the law but, office act is very clear. But, but but over time, the courts have established that that is an office in the first place, and so no individual with all due respect, has been vested with the functions, all the functions of the office. For us to even deem it that it is that person's exclusive preserve to even choose a suitable um, office or office building okay. or accommodation for the office. You think he was overly pampered? No, not him. I'm still trying to say that. I don't want mm -hmm. to refer to him. But I think that the authorities uh -huh. may have also labored under the same impression that nearly everybody has been under, or the burden has been under, that it is an individual, and that individual's word alone mm -hmm. carries everything the fa to their finality. So that's the point. That's why I'm saying that we all who held that view, or those who held that view, and even at the highest point, if there's any blame to share, they must have a share. Because, and, and for me, that my personal view is that whoever will be the next, or even the acting, mm -hmm. must ensure that that misconception, according to me, is not also carried out, or doesn't okay. carry her out into doing things to seem that if it's not about me, then, or if it's not about the special prosecutor, then the functions cannot be performed. Okay. No. And I'm very happy. And you remember, just this morning, there was something I was trying to recollect. One of the interviews, Mr. Amidu said that if he was not given appropriate facilities last year, mm -hmm. nobody should expect him to go after individuals for uh, uh, i'm not trying to quote him but mm. he should forgive me yeah. but the understanding should go under individuals especially those who have taken up the mandate of a political party to run for a political office at that time i was surprised to hear that from him to be honest with you apart from the fact that it is not left to him alone mm -hmm. He doesn't exercise that discretion. Okay. Because if the police were to exercise discretion that this person has stolen, mm. and yet if I arrest, let's say he's a member of the national security, he's a member of a political party, if I arrest him, the whole country will be turned upside down. Mm. We have seen a number of times. A, a when, similar one when, being the John Mahama. Yes. Part. But then they mm -hmm. coincidentally, mm -hmm. when he, in this, and I nearly agreed with him when I read in the resignation letter. Mm. The, what he deems to be the prudence, okay, pr the ground of prudence. Mm -hmm. That's why he didn't pursue Mr. Mahama. Look, I fully agreed with what Mr. Mahama's response to him, except the choice of <laughs> some <laughs> ominous words. Let which, me take a quick break no, here. Now, let me okay. conclude. Uh -huh. let me just just uh -huh. two seconds. But at the same time, mm -hmm. the investigation that he did on the Japa mm -hmm. and his own understanding, it was. One, to challenge even the signing of the executive, yeah. the, the, um, the assent of the yeah. president. Mm -hmm. And the whole Japan investigation mm -hmm. also concerns the president who is also running for office. Okay, uh, we are taking oh, a breather oh, here. Yeah, this is the thing is the TFM. We'll be back on the TV as minister. well. Don't go away. When you touch a minister. <laughs>
You're welcome back. This is the big issue on City FM and City TV. We are talking about the resignation of Martin Amidu as special prosecutor and other matters emerging from that incident. I'm here with Dr. Kuja Sante. Uh, he's director of advocacy and uh, policy engagement at CDD Ghana. Also, uh, Yao Pong is a private legal practitioner as well as Nick Papu Samwa, uh, also a lawyer as well and member of the NDC. Uh, Franklin Kujo is also with us via Zoom. We get to continue the conversation now. Uh, Dr. Sante, before we delve into the role of the board and how it played out in during Mr. Amidu's tenure, mm. he talks about interference mm -hmm. and we've seen government's response on the surface of the issues we have do you see an interference in his work well i think his allegations about interference is quite specific so uh, mm -hmm. at least if i read his letter mm -hmm. to the president yeah he refers to the corruption risk assessment that he did on the japan realities mm -hmm. uh, uh, transaction mm -hmm and submitting a 13-page uh, summary, summary to the president. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his words, he had the intention of uh, triggering some investigations mm. into uh, matters that he thought, you know, bordered on, uh, um, you know, crimes mm -hmm. uh, arising from his corruption risk assessment. Mm -hmm. And he suggests that uh, basically the president's actions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in asking him to wait for him to come and have a discussion uh, on the on the on the 13 page document that has been sent and further actions which included that um, uh, the minister for finance, finance has submitted comments mm. and that he should you know, uh, look at the comments from mm. the Minister for Finance, yeah. borders on, in, on, on interference. Mm -hmm. The presidency had also made a claim that, well, yeah. they, were, they were within their rights. Mm -hmm. uh, now that you've submitted a report, mm. the subject matter of the report, which is the Ministry and the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. have submitted comments. Mm. So if we ask you to look at them, we don't, you know, there's reason that you shouldn't have any inter uh, concerns about interference. Mm. What, uh, the only information that is not reconciled is mm. whether or not the president said, then don't carry on any investigation mm. yeah. into the matter. But if you take that aside, it is still within Mr. Amidu's right mm -hmm. to say, I'm going forward. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Um, and Mr. Amidu then make reference to death threats. Mm -hmm. And say that uh, the events of 12, 12 November. November remove any protections that he had, mm. um, and he he described the I think he used the word as a vacuum, yeah. the vacuum he created. Said a vacuum, yeah. So that that is I think that no, there are issues that maybe we are not aware of mm. in respect mm. of how President Rawlings's death. Uh, may have mm -hmm. impacted on mm -hmm. his final decision mm -hmm. uh, to walk away. But if you look at the sequence of uh, uh, the exchanges of letters and the discussions, they, as I said, the only matter yes. which is Mr. Amidu's words against the president's word is, did I tell you to you know stop going? And even mm -hmm. if I told you, mm -hmm. why didn't you just go ahead? Because you still have the mandate under the law. Mm -hmm. So uh, it leaves that whole matter a little bit unclear uh, and then subsequently we've had these discussions about security that's come up because I know Mr. Amidu has a, an army guard um, as a special prosecutor I don't know what has happened now that he's a former, former special, special prosecutor person. I know that the presidency has communicated mm. that uh, uh, authorizing the the IGP, the IGP to, give him to police protection. provide him 24-hour uh, mm. protection because as for the security threats and so that's actually the reason why the special prosecutor is provided with security mm -hmm. because you expect that in the job those things can come but it mm -hmm. seems like there's something more that has happened that we are not aware of and Mr. Amidu has said well uh, until he's provoked before he will go and say <laughs> <laughs> anything so those, I think those are the matters that are unclear but from what has transpired with the Jaffa deal this is in the public domain mm -hmm. 
which I think is a, it's a good job mm -hmm. that uh, we, you know, for the first time, we do a corruption risk assessment. It is something we should encourage uh, to do on many of these international agreements. Mm -hmm. um, and we know the content of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I think that that is where I, I cannot resolve what is it that pushed Mr. Amidu to walk away mm -hmm. completely. Because as for some of the operational issues, as I said, you can see from the discussion and the letters that have gone uh, between yeah. back and forth that they were being the resolved. Accommodation and all that, yeah. Mr. Amidu wants particular things. He wants mm -hmm. to have full control over them. Mm -hmm. And it's taking longer mm -hmm. for that to happen. But those were being worked through. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's very, very diligent. He writes on mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. He writes a letter. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they, they are documented. So there's no contestation mm -hmm. as to those exchanges. Yeah. But what is it that triggered this last, you know, is it just President Rawlings' departure? Mm -hmm. And what did that mean to Mr. Amidu? Or that because the president was asking him, you know, certain things or as he's claiming that the president was stopping him mm -hmm. from going forward with an investigation, what sort of was the final straw. Mm. That is what I cannot tell. Could you, can I just, yeah. uh, just to um, yeah. support? Mm. Um, paragraph three of the resignation letter. Okay. This is what you say. But it says several things have happened since then. That's since the appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But your reaction to my letter with reference number so so and so dated mm -hmm. 16 August 2020, which mm -hmm. was delivered to, your, to you mm -hmm. on 19th October 2020, conveying mm. to you the conclusions and observations of the analysis of risk of corruption and anti-corruption assessment mm -hmm. of the Japan Royalties Limited transactions convinces Nothing. me mm -hmm. beyond every reasonable doubt that you had labored under the mistaken belief, mm -hmm. and there are strong words coming, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that I could hold the office of special prosecutor as your kudu. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just to support mm -hmm. what he said, it appears that this in fact, the issue of threat, mm -hmm. from my reading, I don't think it came out clearly in this. Mm -hmm. It was in the... In the, in the, 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 the yes. yes. So one. when we are looking at mm -hmm. strictly the, the letter, strictly the letter mm -hmm. and the ground mm -hmm. for the resignation, mm -hmm. it is, in his view, mm -hmm. the nice. response from the president. Or the conduct of the presidency. Mm -hmm. That is the only reason. Because otherwise, in the Japan deal itself, mm -hmm. the report, he stated that it but for the president's own insistence mm -hmm. and brave, bravery, yeah. the LI-2374 mm -hmm. would not have been passed. Mm -hmm. And it would not have been possible for him to go ahead or With to the have the power assessment. to even do the risk assessment. Mm -hmm. I have a copy of the LI here, and I'm saying that it is quite far-reaching. I have my Which own... Which one? Is it the operational one or the other one? The, that is the, the, the uh, operation. Yes. This is the, yeah, the operational one. Office of the Special yeah, Prosecutor yeah. yeah. Operations yeah. Regulations yeah, okay. 2018. Yeah, LI yeah. 2374. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. so until the subsequent letter, the letter that came after the, um, the uh, resignation, mm -hmm. there had not really, or even the resignation mm -hmm. letter, mm -hmm. there had not been any indication of interference, at least from him, openly. Mm -hmm. The letter too doesn't suggest that. And so we would then, after him, mm -hmm. then have to look closely at the letter. Yes, we need to. Right and the definitely, ground. Definitely, definitely. Number take one, one, just, just, one, just two minutes, mm -hmm. and then you take up. Mm -hmm. Number one is that the president was acting as a judge in his own court. Mm -hmm. Still on uh, Amidu's concern. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, take each of so the let's, let's just take but each of them. Take it. Let me and take then, the ones that are going And then, then, <laughs> right, and then have the president respond to it. Okay, <laughs> since you, you took the third paragraph in Amidu's letter, yeah. which he says uh, there was a mistaken belief that he could be a pudil, mm -hmm. here's the president's response to that. At page one of the letter, you claim that you had been convinced uh, beyond reasonable doubts that His Excellency, the President, had a mistaken belief that you could hold the office as a poodle. In substantiation of this allegation, you allude to a request by the President Chief of Staff, pursuant to a directive by the President, for you to meet the President the morning of 21st October 2020 to discuss a report you had delivered to the President, which you described as the analysis of risk of corruption and anti-corruption assessment of the transaction document for the Japa transaction. Indeed, you described the report as being in the nature of a compliance audit or an inspector general's report, 
it is instructive that a 13-page document which you delivered to the president was in fact not the actual report but a summary which also included information about other investigations. Your accusation of interference with your functions as simply on account of meeting with the president held with you is perplexing and in exercise of what you consider to be powers under Act 959, you had voluntarily uh, proceeded to produce the Japa report. The president had no hand in your work. Without prompting from any quarter within the executive, you delivered the letter purporting to be a copy of your report to be the president, um, uh, to the president. And the purpose of presenting a copy of the Japa report to the president is decipherable from paragraph 32 of your letter to the president in which you indicate that you hope the report will be used to improve the current and future legislative and executive actions to make corruption and corruption related offenses very high risk enterprises mm. in Ghana. Let me give a certain perspective that you mm -hmm. can okay. perhaps explain. Okay. Go ahead. You see, Matiamido's problem with the the fact that the president almost was acting as an interface between his ministers mm -hmm. and his office mm -hmm. based upon a report that he has submitted. He says, what, when I submitted the report to you, I did so out of courtesy. I'm giving you a report that I have done in respect of an audit risk assessment. Mm -hmm. I intend to go ahead to probably, mm -hmm. because of certain findings mm -hmm. that I have made, Institutes investigations into that matter. That is basically the context of the of the interaction that I had with you. Call for mm -hmm. you, you. You sent your chief of staff to call for me to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have responded to your invitation. However, my response to your invitation is as a matter of kids mm -hmm. okay. because I want to know what it is that you are seeking to um, to to require of me mm -hmm. in terms of a discussion. Mm -hmm. His problem with the discussion, and I think that people are not paying particular mm -hmm. attention to that particular, mm -hmm. to that particular mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. He did not present the for, report for discussion. For, to the president mm -hmm. for a discussion mm -hmm. or for a review. Mm -hmm. And so issues of audio altering pattern and those things don't come in. Because if I say that the report I've sent to you is by nature of an audit, mm -hmm. if there are persons who are affected by the contents of that report, they know what to do. Mm. And that is why my learned friend here mm. basically was able to go to court when uh, uh, Mr. Um, you want to go there. No, I'm coming. When uh, uh, it's a matter of public mm. record. Mm. When, mm. when, when, no, uh, no, you. when uh, uh, the finance minister mm -hmm. felt that a report by the Auditor General was had affected uh, or had affected him in a negative mm -hmm. light. He took advantage of the processes mm -hmm. of law mm -hmm. by seeking a review in the court. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Uh, Martin Amidu has issued a report mm -hmm. and there are persons who feel that mm -hmm. they have been affected okay. by the contents of that report, it is not for the president who is the appointing authority of those persons mm -hmm. and whose office. That's one of the key things that Martin Amidu makes. Your own office is one of the persons indicted mm -hmm. in the report. Mm -hmm. Why do you want me to accept the response of the so persons who have been affected by your mm -hmm. uh, by my report mm -hmm. and act as an interface between yourself and my office. It's an interference in my work. If the persons have been affected by the contents of my report, and I believe that those those um, recommendations are recommendations I intend to act on in the future. Allow me to do my work in respect of those. If I accept any recommend, if I accept any comments mm -hmm. from those persons, it means you are directing me as to how I should do my work. Remember that the presidency has not denied the fact that the president asked him to hold on mm -hmm. to working on the report, pursuant to receiving the responses Pen from pending the receipt, pending pending. The re the receipt mm -hmm. of responses mm -hmm. from those. Yeah, minister, uh, yeah. And that is the mis you see, he says that you misapprehended mm -hmm. the, the report the nature me, of the yeah. report mm -hmm. and the effect of the report. Yeah, almost like an audit. Uh, that's exactly. Why you're and you are saying there. that it is because mm -hmm. I see it mm -hmm. as an audit. Mm -hmm. And so because I see it as an audit, audit. Mm -hmm. there is there's the a ma management, uh, there's a management There's a management comment. Mm -hmm. I'm calling you yeah. mm -hmm. to come and let me uh, give my yeah. explanation yeah. of mm -hmm. things that have happened. He yeah. says, I am an independent mm -hmm. uh, 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 body mm -hmm. 
investigative as it is as well. Mm -hmm. Any attempt by you to give me comments, to, to direct me as to where to hold on, mm -hmm. to direct me as to when to commence my uh, further work on this, mm -hmm. amounts to an interference mm -hmm. in my work. Mm -hmm. okay. Leave me and let me do my work. That is the problem that the presidency has. The part in Amidu's report that says the report will be, quote, used to improve current and future legislative mm -hmm. and executive actions yes. to make corruption and corruption-related offenses very high-risk enterprises so, in Ghana. Uh, just one word. So How the, does that the, come in? I'm coming. The, so president, the, I'm coming. The, president's, the president's executive secretary, mm -hmm. As a lawyer, it indicates to Mr. Martin Abidu that the president inviting you was an exercise of his executive powers as president mm -hmm. to, in response of policy direction and, and to implement, and future, or to implement the, the implementation. That is when the two parties yes, completely yes, yeah. miss each other yeah, yeah. in okay. terms yeah. of where yeah. okay. they. So he reads the 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 continual yeah. demands on him. To one hold on to, 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 to yeah, the uh, yeah, uh, yeah. federal responses yeah. on the uh -huh. report, accept uh -huh. responses yeah. from the, the third parties yeah. that may be affected by yeah. the, the report as interference mm. with this work. So I think that the president, in dealing with Martin Amidu, perhaps mm -hmm. knowing the person, and especially because Martin Amidu mm. had raised concerns about the meeting and the nature mm. of the meeting, mm. should have documented his, mm. his, his request to him that look. I have received your report. Mm -hmm. There are persons that are affected mm -hmm. by the contents of mm -hmm. the report. This is what I think, uh, uh, this is what my responses mm -hmm. are from mm -hmm. these persons. I have incorporated it and I'm forwarding it to you. To hold me, to, you see, his whole point is that I am not an appointee of yours mm -hmm. for whom you can direct as to what I should so, do. So, next. Or so if the president mm -hmm. had written to Mr. Amidu mm -hmm. following the submission of the that Mr. Abidu would have been satisfied that he's following or he's recognizing... And, and not inviting for so a meeting see, because to the, 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 the idea is that I, in, in respect of seeing where Mr. Abidu is mm -hmm. coming from, mm -hmm. I have issued a report. Mm -hmm. The report makes some recommendations and some observations. Mm -hmm. I intend to do future work in respect. He's indicated that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. those things may be the subject mm -hmm. of future, future investigations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His point is... Once I have made those comments, mm -hmm. and you know the nature of my of my mm -hmm. uh, of my office, mm -hmm. yeah. you have no right to call me to give me any direction, mm -hmm. to give me any advice mm -hmm. or solicitation mm -hmm. okay. as to how I should do my because yeah, basically exactly. the okay. president let, the let, president, let's hear from Frank the, now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. the president and those are key issues. Mm -hmm. Did the president ask Matinamidu to hold on? to any further work on the on the report pending a response from the finance minister. Mm. The presidency has not denied it. No, I think the, the president, president didn't say that. They did not. 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 See, he says that, mm -hmm. listen to the justification of the president. He says, I uh, the, the principle of all the uttering pattern mm -hmm. demands that when you make comments against pa uh, a particular person, they should have the right to what? To respond mm -hmm. to those. And that he conveyed the response of the finance minister to Martin mm -hmm. The purpose, the, the, the factual uh, arguments that, or the factual assertions, mm -hmm. because the meeting was between the president and Martin mm -hmm. I don't know who else was there. But you look at the facts and make your inferences. Did Martin Amidu, did the president ask Martin Amidu to hold on to further action on the on the report pending the comments of the minister mm -hmm. who conveyed the comments of the minister to martin amidu it was the president mm -hmm. it was the presidency mm -hmm. and so why would you say that the, the martin amidu will be lying mm -hmm. if you say the president says hold on until you get the response no, of, so there are no, no, so the two, the two separate issues yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, I, I'm going to take a paragraph mm. in the uh, yeah, yeah. the response from the president. Yes. But let's let's hear from Franklin mm. first. Mm. Uh, Franklin. Uh, it seems to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. that the special prosecutor did not even uh, need to send any any report to the president in the yes. first. He said he did it out of Ketsi. He did it out of Ketsi. That's what I'm saying. He shouldn't have done that. He, if he's asserting his full independence. Um, because knowing our political structures, some of these informal requests would have come anyway. That is it something we can discuss? And I think that's where the two, mm. like uh, uh, the lawyer, lawyer, 
Oh, Paco. Yeah. Paco. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly said, basically said the two missed each other. Mm. I think you probably have just gone ahead to publish his report and then let us all deal with it. Or the persons affected, he sends the, he sends the exactly. report to them. That is what he should have done. But I think, he, well, of course, he wanted to be respectful. Yeah. And now, and that not only that, he says he talks about the fact that this is for future. Yes, uh, executive, executive actions, and, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. So you're also missing a very important... Let Franklin finish, please. I understood that statement about the future uh, guidance very, very well, which mm. meant that the report is done anyway. I can do nothing about it. Mm. So the report now must be, uh, it must be acted upon. So I'm just coming to tell you that this is a summary of the issues. That's all he did. So the report has been done. Is indicting certain persons. Mm. He doesn't intend to, to have any conversations about whether the persons could be absorbed or not. But then the president's response, obviously because of the cases as well, mm. decided that, well, could you hold on uh, for a certain period of time? I, I, that's all we know, right? But I'm submitting that Amidu asserting his powers should probably not have even. Uh, sent to the presidency because the presidency is now telling him that mm. even you, uh, we didn't, uh, we didn't ask you to do anything. You voluntarily went ahead and decided to investigate the Japa. So why don't you deal with it and stop bothering us, Mexican? That's what they are telling him in return. Um, okay, um, paragraph six of uh, the president's response to Martin Amidu's uh, resignation and the issues he raised. Okay, let me take it from paragraph 5 then to 6 and 7. It is baffling that you present a summary report of work not commissioned by the president or a member of the executive to him and expect him not to act on the report, particularly in the light of the clear expression by your good self that the report was supposed to guide future executive actions. It should be noted that Article 581 of the Constitution vests executive authority in the president. The president was thus under a constitutional injunction to take further action and make further inquiries of you in relation to the work you had purportedly carried out, which concerns the exercise of executive discretion. The president's meeting with you on 21st October 2020 was and should have been understood by you in this spirit. At that meeting, uh, you conceded not having given appointees of the president affected by your report a hearing or an opportunity to comment on your observations and conclusions. In accordance with the constitutional standards of fairness, reasonableness and candor, the president requested you give the public officials in question an opportunity to comment on your findings and conclusions. Fidelity to the principles of fairness is a basic tenet of administrative justice. Now, a request to comply with the rules of natural justice and fair hearing surely cannot be cited as basis for alleged interference consequence upon which you would resign. Now, in any event, it is pertinent to point out that without compulsion, you agreed to the president's request to offer the public officers affected by your work an opportunity to comment on what you now strangely characterize in your letters as serious corruption and corruption-related offenses. It was pursuant to the clear concession on the need to give the public officers whose conduct had been impugned by your work an opportunity to be heard on the matter that the president requested comments from the Ministry of Finance. The assertion by you that you reluctantly agreed is neither born of our facts or what, no, no uh, what mm, actually mm. transpired at the meeting between you and the president on 21st mm. October mm. 2020. So, so it's, it's so clear. So, <laughs> so for me, there are two things yeah. when it comes to rules mm. of natural justice. Mm. And the two have played out here. One well, of Mr. Amidu is accusing the president of one aspect of the rules of natural justice, mm -hmm. that is being a judge in your own cause. Mm -hmm. Mr. Amidu is also accusing the president of interfering with his job as a special prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And again, the president or the president's office now is, if the word accused is too strong, but I'll still use it, accusing Mr. Amidu of breaching the second part of the rules of natural justice. Mm -hmm. Give fair hearing or fair opportunity to all persons who are subject of whether you call it an assessment 
or you call it investigation, mm -hmm. inquiry, or any prosecutorial or judicial process, opportunity to be heard. And if you auditors do this all the time, in fact, they are required to incorporate the views of persons who are the subject of the audit and to call this also a, 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 an audit of a sort, mm -hmm. then it was only required that they were given the opportunity. Now, Ni is saying that it was not for the president to have requested the office, the, the special prosecutor, to give these persons a hearing. a hearing. Mind you, the whole matter related to a ministry. It only happens that certain key members of the ministry were mentioned, but they were, strictly speaking, not even the subject of them. It was the act, actions of the ministry, one. And two, the mere, as I said before, the fact that the president gave his accent, which is required by law, to the Japa Act and the subsequent um, deal or if you like, transaction. And then even challenge parliaments, if you quote and unquote, role or entitlement to have even passed the law the way it is. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to this whole issue of the airline. I have a, con a, a, a copy here. Mm -hmm. And reading through the airline, I'm saying that if care is not taken, it will get to a time that even the president may not be able to perform the very important function that makes a law that is passed by parliament effective. That is what? the giving of the asset. Mm -hmm. If a parliament own, own legislative function may even be challenged because by the ally as has been uh, applied mm -hmm. by the OFC, the Office of Special Prosecutor, the Office of the Special Prosecutor can even question why the president, first of all, why parliament may even pass a certain law or in the process of passing it. It gives them, the, OF, the, the office, the right to question whether or not when the act is passed, mm -hmm. it will not facilitate, for want of a better word, corruption or corruption-related mm -hmm. offenses. Mm -hmm. And for me, that challenges a very fundamental function and that's a concept 106 of the Constitution. But, but, but why would that be a problem? I mean, even uh, uh, citizens can go to court and, yeah. and, see, and that challenge is where, that. Well, that is where I'm going uh, to. That uh, is where, that's so, where I'm actually going to. So uh, my view is that, so one, if an office or an institution has the power to now question and the act of questioning now becomes, as it were, the tool to render an executive act, mm -hmm. a legislative act, mm -hmm. null and void, so to speak, or as the subject of investigation, it may, it may have some dire consequences for the powers vested in the legislature to make laws and also in the executive. That is why members of parliament also came out to question one on the, on the, in relation to the auditorium party yeah. rule. That when we re you requested for document and so on, mm -hmm. we had expected that a further inquiry was needed. Mm -hmm. You would have then come to us or invite us to give further information on how the, the, the transaction or the law itself was passed. Mm -hmm. Then to, to the executive also, they have had a, a call. So the, the request was not only, as you put it here at page two, was not only in relation to the investigation or the assessment regarding the actions of the Ministry of Finance, but also he says the assent, the executive fun function, and the impact the, the parliamentary approval of the transaction yeah. or the document have had. These are uh, instances of the, the, and this is not a problem of Mr. Amidu. Okay. For me, I am only looking at the LI itself and the extent to which he has given those far-reaching powers to that office. Yeah, but, uh, uh, okay, but, but, and, 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 and so that is why generally mm. the determination of whether or not an act of a person or an act of parliament contravenes the provision the of the constitution is left to the Supreme Court alone. So any person, as he says, I agree, mm -hmm. can make comments about it. But where a, an office established by law mm -hmm. to act now is able to get a legislative instrument. And mind you, this is so sub uh, substantive 
important that it should have rather been in the parent act. But for okay. it to now be in the ally on the basis of which this has been done. But well, there's no blame because he says the president firmly committed himself mm. to the drafting. I'm very certain that he may have seen it. Yeah, sure, yeah. And the attorney general was also mm. aware. Mm. But that doesn't mean that concerns cannot be raised. The last thing I want to say is that we are all aware your document, and we must commend your officers. One of the best I've heard mm. on, this, on this program. City is started to be prim and proper yeah. when it comes to these matters. <laughs> you understand? It's related this whole thing to the issue of the, the, um, the narrations mm. that had been given previously. Nowhere was it said that the president had taken any step to um, interfere. For example, when my, my, my one of my mentors, Mr. Um, Aini, mm -hmm. Send the matter to court only on, only on the basis of his understanding of the law. Anyway, I, I, what, from what I know, the president personally insisted that the attorney general should defend this matter in favor of Mr. Amidu because Mr. Amidu, when he was initially was a party, but his name had to be struck out. Yeah. So there was no one else to have defended the matter. If the attorney general, with the president, had agreed with Mr. Ini and Co. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the Supreme Court, who are the repositories of the law, may still have disagreed with the two of them. But there will be nothing wrong with both the Attorney General and the plaintiff agreeing on the matter. It has happened oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm saying that that may have, if that had happened, then, but again, the commitment of the President to this very court, mm -hmm. if that had happened, it may have led to a decision that he, he be removed. Yeah, but you, you know the implications of that decision as well. For but it doesn't matter. The whole, whole the Supreme Court, that <laughs> sure. would have but, that. But, yeah. I'm saying, but even <laughs> after that, there were serious discussions. It's one of the most seriously contested cases, even after oh, the judgment. It is, yeah. is it okay. After the yeah. judgment. Mm. So, all that should go to support what so you have to do. The only instance where, mm -hmm. the only instance where there is any allegation of quote and unquote interference okay. was when he says the Ajapa deal came up and the subsequent matter. Okay. That, in my view, with all due respect to the learned, um, um, the good old lawyer, mm -hmm. every experience and all that, mm. should resign. It cannot be, with all due respect, enough. the only ground. Mm -hmm. It is not sufficient. Okay. And knowing who. He is. I had even thought that he resigned as Attorney General, but I'm hearing today that he was actually removed. Yes, he was dismissed. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you see. But so he has stood his ground even at that time. Yeah. So well, why? Resign. And me, for me, if there is any other extraneous matters, mm -hmm. we cannot now rely on it. What you should rely on is what is what contained. What he's giving us. What is contained mm -hmm. in his resignation letter because okay. he has quoted. Well, everyone lost, including the constitution. Let's hear from uh, Dr. No, just, uh, just a small point. I just mm -hmm. wanted to add that, you know, in all of this, we have to remember that the corruption risk assessment was probably the first time yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In that, that we have done this. In so, Africa. Yes. So even the, the rules, the procedures for how to respond to a mm -hmm. corruption risk assessment, I think even yet to be done. Yeah, yes, yes. Because if this was an investigation, there's mm -hmm. already laid down procedure yeah. for how those who are affected by it mm. would act yeah so um you know i'm not I, I i don't want to pass judgment on how people perceived it mm -hmm. whether it was an audit uh, and in mm -hmm. all of that and and when you don't the absence of rule you still have to go back to the rules of natural justice yes. maybe in mr Amidu's first view, principles it's how it's done so he maybe he would have preferred that uh the minister is for finance yeah. would mm -hmm. write to yeah. him Mm -hmm. And that the president and will not, not be the, the, con the conduit okay. for, you know, that. Mm. So I think it's, it's really the way he sees how these independent and mm. maybe the relationship he had had with the president yes. for all this while to this yeah. point yeah. Uh, had not. There was no time where this matter, a matter that he had maybe done anything on, where he had been called and. Is he, uh, uh, so I think that might have. Yeah, been that was what, it. Is he, if you look strictly uh, yeah. at the track record of Martin Amidou and the reasons, and we are just to look at the superficial reasons that have been given by this 
and say that simply on account of the fact that the president has expressed an opinion mm -hmm. and because he has expressed an mm -hmm. opinion that he disagreed with, mm -hmm. that was the only reason why he was resigning. Yeah, yeah. I think that is not yeah, that, that, yeah. that yeah. is yeah. very yeah. 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 There must be definitely yeah. more, more to this. Yeah. More than no, a, you see, this, no, it's not about the situation. Not <laughs> it's about the fact that if you look at the person's track record, mm -hmm. this is somebody who stood up to a certain president. If you look at the details surrounding the said meeting between himself and President Mills, from various uh, 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 third party yeah. accounts, yeah. you understand? He has not been one that has, has been afraid to point a finger where he thinks he must point a finger. He's no, called the, the presidential no, candidate of, of our party, mm. you know, frankly, yeah, yeah, a suspect. Yeah. I mean, mm. Frankly, just a second. Mm. A suspect. And so this is not someone who is afraid to call a, a, a spade a spade. What is interesting mm -hmm. is that well, what we should be interrogating, mm -hmm. and I think that these are times when, I, unfortunately, I don't see parliament acting. In any other jurisdiction, yeah, fighting for the parliament. No, that is why. That, that is why. Unfortunately, <laughs> then we can say they they a them to lose their no, jobs. then there, there is a jurisdiction of duty no, 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 because no, it's, it's in any yeah. in any jurisdiction, mm -hmm. parliament would have summoned mm -hmm. Martin Amidu mm -hmm. under oath mm -hmm. to tell the Ghanaian public through well, this representative. The parliament is not in session. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. These are things that are serious enough okay. to yeah, call for a committee of parliament, the committee of parliament, to summon Martin Amidu on oath where he would have no choice and be the man of, oh, of outstanding integrity, he will tell mm. the Ghanaian public what exactly necessitated mm. or pushed them because something must have pushed them. It was just but uh, what will you require that, that, on off you when see, you have the opportunity no, to no, you, see, see, you, you are the same person who are saying we shouldn't speculate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you and I are not going to speculate, uh, so I'm looking at what, 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 oh, what is his other letter states? The events of 12 November yes, 20. Yes, remove the only protection yes, I have. I exactly. That, and the threats and plans directed at me for undertaking this in Japan. That's why I say that there is more. Listen. It is not just because the president has expressed an opinion mm. about something that he has he had offered, and he feels that the president, because he is also potentially going to investigate the office of the president mm -hmm. and other other persons mm -hmm. in respect of mm. this particular report. So that is just the basis for him to resign. Look, it goes beyond that. Okay. One other thing I I suspect, perhaps. He did not. He uh, maybe that maybe you could say yes. That President and Martin Amidu had had a cordial relationship in respect of mm. his office. Mm. He had a certain understanding, mm. and I think he felt that the president's commitment mm -hmm. to setting up the office mm -hmm. and to providing it with the independence that he has assured him, because mm. he said the only reason why he took this position was on account of the fact that he felt the president was coming mm -hmm. in with a certain mandate yeah. mm -hmm. to deal with corruption. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he got surprised at the fact that, and that is why he talks about the issue of Pudio, that mm. if he makes a finding against mm. the president's office, mm. he thought the president may stay his hand. Mm. What he got surprised was the fact that once you had touched the president's office, he was definitely going to respond. And if he responded, you shouldn't be surprised because mm. he has been accused. Mm -hmm. You have accused his office mm -hmm. of something. He will definitely respond mm -hmm. to that accusation. You don't expect that if you are setting your independence mm -hmm. and you are setting the fact that you will do your work. Mm. Beyond the fact that the man yeah. has responded to what it is that you had. Especially uh, where the full report is the public. And that is where the president's office tells him. The mm. And that is where the president's office tells him. The the office the tells him. Mm. That, that's where the president's office tells him that mm. you are under no obligation to agree to receive the report. Mm. Mm. So if but you are under no obligation to receive the report and you agreed to have them make their comments, mm -hmm. then you yourself have become complicit some way, somehow, mm -hmm. in whatever arrangements, private arrangements, you've had with mm -hmm. uh, the presidency. That is why we need parliament to call our uh, 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 former, former uh, special prosecutor, prosecutor. What that former or, or this <laughs> bring him before the house, because we paid him. Yeah. Let him come and account to us what actually transpired between himself and the mm. president mm. and for which he feels so strongly about that he must resign. It would act as future guidance for whoever is appointed mm. next. Mm. So that we would, if we need to pass legislation to, to, to cover sure. the conduct of the uh, uh, interactions between the executive and such independent offices, we know. Because, for example, what would prevent the president next time mm -hmm. if he refers a matter to trash? Mm -hmm. Would we be sitting down and having a situation where the president may invite the shark boss because mm -hmm. he, has, he has sent a report about an uh, 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 
finding against the respect of uh, the executive, the president but, but executive. There's a recent example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's what I've given you. The president has accepted the one that you see, the police is also the one that you see. You see, we do not want a situation, we do not want a situation where our independence. And that's why I think the procedures around this have to be very clear. clearly established. We don't want a situation where. Next time, the yeah. presidency may yeah. misinterpret a report yeah. that it has been has been submitted yeah. by yeah. an independent mm. constitutional mm. body mm. as being one for which they can invite mm -hmm. the, the the chief of staff can invite mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, appointee yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the commissioner yeah. for example charge yeah. to the flag staff. Yeah. We don't want that. Yeah. Okay, the independence the of these offices must be then, clearly. Yeah. We'll hear from our, yeah. our listeners and our viewers. Well, the last time I checked. A puddle is a variety. So it's a bit of a dog that has a curly coat that is fundamentally coat. Now, that's an expensive dog. Uh, because you see, when you fundamentally coat a pair, like coat of a puddle, and it tells you that you actually like the puddle. Mm -hmm. What it means is that there may have been several inhibitions in Amigu's way yeah. that he may have overlooked, and reason. now this time around yes, was accepted to be independent. It's not just a matter of words. I also do yeah. not believe that there it was less than Japan thing alone that led to this process. Not even the death of our former mm. president. Let's, let's listen to Franklin, please. Not even the death of our former president Rawlings may mm. be the reason. But those are very coded words, coded um, yeah, terms that he, he used, which we need to decode. And I'm sure uh, Kojo can decode them for us. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, it's serious. And, uh, for me, at the end of the day, what this pertains to, to the, the fight against corruption uh, has been dealt a severe blow. Mm. When the Financial Times of London, the Economist magazine, and the BBC gets in touch and asks all sorts of questions, and they tend to write these things in the international media. Uh, it lowers the confidence. In fact, the Transparency International has also written, uh, I mean, an article suggesting that the Japan deal itself was too problematic. Yeah. What it means is that we keep sliding back on the on the scale, and I think could you could you bear me out? Yeah, yeah, uh, even the Apple barometer sort of suggests that as well. And I don't think we've done pretty well since 2015 or 2016, when we had the most virulent fight against corruption. In terms of the optics of it, the media we use, I participated in those as well. I helped set up Occupy Ghana to do all the things we did, only for us to get to the position or destination, which seems to be doing the witch's dance of one step forward and two steps backwards. Mm. Uh, it's for me, that's why I find, I find that there's a huge sigh which I think we need yeah, to all yeah, take yeah. a look at. Look, mm. like I keep saying, at the end of the day, um, rules are made, but rules are also made to be obeyed. If they have been infringed upon in any way by both the presidency and Amidu, we need to hear this thing. And maybe not wait for the memoirs of Nelson Amidu. Maybe we'll get to know all of this when he writes his memoir. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, I'll be reading your messages, but let me take another break here. You're watching The Big Issue on City TV. If you're listening to us on radio, this is 97.3 City FM. Stay with us. We'll be back with more. of the World Luxury Hotel Award for Best Luxury Riverside Hotel is the Royal Century Hotel and Resort, Ghana. <laughs> now it's coming. Nice. You do well. 
Thank wow. you. <laughs> What's it like being the daughters of an ambassador? There are, of course, many, many good parts, but then there are also some aspects that are hard um, for us as a family, for us just as individuals. Um, I mean, it's hard to know that you're going to be moving from one country to another every three or four years. Um, I think settling down in countries is always, sometimes it can be difficult, um, but there's many good parts to it. Um, like exploring new countries and yeah, I enjoy it a lot. I didn't know what to study. I always liked history, that was my subject. Um, so I was tempted between studying history in Zurich or going to St. Gallen and study economy. Okay. Um, oh wow, history and economics. Well, I mean, they're still related, right? You, you it's find. related <laughs> and I always had a keen interest on economic affairs, okay. but at the end I followed my heart and I, I uh, started uh, studying history in history. You're welcome back to The Big Issue. Um, uh, your message is now uh, Prince Henry in Koforidia. Avna Martin Amidu's resignation clearly shows that President Akufado is not ready to fight corruption. Okay, Wolanyo well, Inakwetia, former special prosecutor, has become an object of ridicule in the eyes of Ghanaians who diligently uh, disappoint us by, by putting our trust in him and used to hold him in high esteem to check corruption. Should be told, Mr. Amidu can't work with anyone trying to find excuses to justify uh, what he couldn't do as special prosecutor. Uh, Koshi Indenu, I don't get this risk assessment report by the OSP. How can the OSP, which is supposed to be an independent institution, conduct a risk assessment on an executive policy? How do you accuse the president of interference if you conduct an advisory report on his policy? Again, what uses the risk assessment reports post parliamentary approval of the contract because governments cannot alter what is approved by parliament? All right. Kweku uh, in La Paz, I'm not impressed with what the lawyers are saying. Amidu did not ask uh, the president to take any action on his report. He said it is pure courtesy after Amidu's investigation. Uh, Ms. Oforiata can go to court and clear his name. Mm -hmm. David in North Ligon, I don't think the president should appoint a special prosecutor. Well, David, that would be deviating from the law. Uh, the position should be declared vacant and open to public. Uh, the people who believe they are eligible, the shortlisted ones, should be vetted by parliament and the best selected to fill the gap. Omar in Accra, I'm surprised at the conduct of of Mr. Amidu, does he need to be pushed before he comes out with how government handled his office? Is his loyalty pledged to Ghanaians or the government? Is there any credible information? If there is, he should release it and not wait to be dead. Okay, Albert from Dakuman. Martin's reasons for resigning might be true, but as an independent body, those were some of the nuances he should have dealt with. Senior in Burma Kam, Martin Amidu's name and integrity will forever remain incorruptible. He tried to fight corruption, but the powers of corruption has fought him out. You can keep your messages coming uh, here on the big issue. So now we are looking at the future of this office of the special prosecutor. <laughs> Dr. Santi, I have heard people say that in spite of Martin Amidu's record, his legal background uh, for attorney general among other things he didn't function and i'm talking about the office mm -hmm. and his role uh, because of his political background mm -hmm. first of all there are people who feel he was chosen because the president wanted to make a political statement and the opposition was also looking at him and in the long run it didn't work out so who is to secede him? Mm -hmm. Should we go the same line or a completely neutral person? <laughs> also, a couple of things. I mean, you know, no matter the, the motives of 
the appointing authority. I think at the end, Ghanaians were happy to have somebody like mm -hmm. Martin Amidou because mm -hmm. of, you know, his, his reputation as a... Uh, somebody who you know um would take everybody on if is to protect the public press so in that sense um whichever way we got to the destination we were happy <laughs> but there were a number of discussions that were were hard even in terms of the appointment so first of all you cannot take the appointment away from the attorney general mm. unless you change the constitution mm. so you still want the attorney general to do the nomination mm. We suggested to the Attorney General that, okay, it is your discretion to nominate. Mm -hmm. You can decide to make even the selection process open. Okay. Let people who are eligible, who think they can do their job, apply. Mm -hmm. It's the, the nomination that you send to the President is what the President would, would appoint. So there's still room mm -hmm. if you want, because this is a job that is very, very specific. It's, there's a specific thing you are trying to do. You have a challenge with the Attorney General dealing with uh, politically exposed persons, mm -hmm. unless you have an Attorney General who also is like a Batnamidu to do that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. when you, <laughs> you pursue your own uh, colleagues and you go and sit at cabinet, I don't know how that <laughs> works out. <laughs> but that is, that is the reality of some of the challenges Therefore, you have this office where the Attorney General delegates had, uh, or delegates his authorities for some person to do that. So I think if we are to appoint somebody, that option is still there okay. to sort of open the pool of uh, people that mm -hmm. could apply for this job. Mm -hmm. Because it's a special job, and you need somebody with courage, uh, but also public trust and confidence to do that job. Mm -hmm. The second point is, going back to uh, Lawyer Pond's point, that it's not just the special prosecutor, mm -hmm. but you have an office. And there are certain features of the office that, uh, I mean, if you are not intimate, if you are not read the act, you might miss. Mm. So, for example, the, the one of the things that we wanted to do was to make sure that the deputy was not just somebody that was giving jobs to do, mm -hmm. but there's an asset recovery division that, by law, should be mm. the deputy's responsibility, so that she always has a certain responsibility within the office all mm. throughout. Mm. The, the same thing that even if we wanted to second people to the office, it has to be by the, the request of the special prosecutor. And the special prosecutor can reject the persons that are coming. Mm. And if you look at the some of the allies, there's a code of conduct that you actually, when you are seconded, you have to subscribe to the code of conduct of the office. Mm. And therefore, you can be sanctioned if you actually misbehave. So there are many features in this office beyond the individual mm -hmm. that, if the individual decides to subject themselves to it, can really enhance the operations of the office. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that this 10-story guest farm building mm -hmm. that we went through all the whatever to, to mm -hmm. put together, mm -hmm. that the, the executive does not withdraw. Actually, if they can even make a commitment that they have given that office to the special prosecutor's office. Mm. So we know that now we don't have an issue with accommodation. Mm -hmm. Whoever is coming has enough space to set up an organization that mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. The last thing is the collaborative work that has to happen between Very agencies. Very important. That is why the board was set up the way it is. And the way the board is set up, mm -hmm. It is institutional representation. Yes. So you, it's not like the only people that are added is a woman who is coming from the, uh, the anti-corruption mm. uh, uh, fraternity. Mm. That's all. Mm. So it, is, it, is, it can work. And what we had recommended in the past was that they have to have protocols yeah. around how investigations, particularly when you get conflict investigations, how agencies should resolve it. So that everybody knows, you know, some of the overlapping mandates, mm -hmm. how they are going to resolve it. Mm -hmm. That is still outstanding. So there are there are a few things that I said within the office and the law that would make this office effective mm -hmm. if we give it the chance for it to, to do the work that it was mm -hmm. set up to do. And so beyond Martin Amidu, would you say the office has functioned properly? No, I mean, you have to remember, as I said, this is, I mean, uh, the, this was uh, two, well, with two years now, mm -hmm. uh, we, we had expected that things would move faster. 
so particularly securing a new office. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't for the lack of trying. That's a, you know, there have been very <laughs> many, many, many options. Mm -hmm. So when I think the get fan option came, everybody was excited. And it was thought that it can be, you know, it will be ready. Even there was a suggestion that they can start using certain That's portions of it and so on. That works. all didn't work out. But now that office is ready. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, the, the, all the plans that were laid down should, can even start immediately. Mr. Amidu published at some point about 250 uh, positions or so that, you know, some mm -hmm. of us thought that, okay, we didn't need to have 250 mm -hmm. uh, immediately. Even if you had 10, Stuff, yeah. you could start something. Yeah. So the, the, I think there's an opportunity there because we need to have a, re, a response to our stagnation in fighting corruption. Hmm. It cannot, this society will not go anywhere if we continue the way we are going. We have to find ways to address these things. It's not all in the law. Right, it's not all in the law and institutions. There's a lot that has to be done be. Can get around there. around <laughs> some you know cultural issues, yeah. around some, some understanding mm -hmm. of ethics values. Uh, uh, that's the point. Yes. If we cannot come to some agreement that if you are in public service, there are certain values that we have to protect. Yeah. We can't even move forward, no matter what institutions you build, people will skirt around it. So there are fundamental questions, but I think that we cannot throw our hands in the air and say, okay, my journey didn't work, and therefore mm, we should it. leave it. Mm. Yeah. We have invested a lot in, in this institution. Mm. Let's make it work. And if we can make it work, we'll be able to you know, move, move this country uh, forward. Uh, lawyer. It's just to um, add to or continue from where you left off, um, about collaboration. I think that yeah. th that's very important, but also the need to resource these corruption-fighting institutions, mm -hmm. if I may call it so. You see, so uh, um, there is a data which I happen to have here. This is uh, Consolidated 2020 Performance for Public Safety Sector, GOG, the mm -hmm. monies that were released. If you look at 2020 budget, let me just take the Office of the Attorney General, mm -hmm. 107 951 yeah, I mean, in excess of uh, a million. Mm. And then Office of Special Prosecutor, 188-084732. Mm -hmm. So the provision that was made for the Office of mm -hmm. Special Prosecutor mm -hmm. alone was even more than mm -hmm. that of the Office of Attorney General. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the amount released as of September 2020, the Office of Attorney General was 69789541.18. And then the amount released per this is 63 to the office of the special prosecutor almost the same as that mm -hmm. that was given mm -hmm. to the attorney general mm -hmm. the attorney general's office is almost represented in almost all the districts yeah. mm -hmm. but when you people can confirm the, the nature of their work as compared to yeah. their, the facilities mm -hmm. i understand it's getting better mm -hmm. meanwhile mm -hmm. in almost every day crime is being fought in the court in almost all the districts under terrible conditions, yes. even in the court. And so if we only set up an office thinking that it is going to be the panacea so for the fight against a particular crime, we are making a big mistake. Mm -hmm. For me, if these monies were given to the police investigators mm -hmm. or their yeah, officers... But, but you have to understand that this is setup i don't think you will begin to see the same operational cost mm -hmm. subsequently oh, because no. you need the the front loading I'm, to I'm, get the i'm office. not actually saying that it is too much for them no. i'm not doing that no you're, you're, you tell that yes i'm saying that yes if if the, the whole office of the attorney general yeah, I agree. I agree. in the district and so on is giving money is almost the same as the office of the special prosecutor of course me i'm biased from the beginning and today I have not supported the idea that the establishment of an office mm -hmm. of special prosecutor in and by itself can solve the problem. is going okay. to solve the problem. And so I have said that. And it doesn't matter who you appoint, except that person sees himself that he's having fidelity to the law, the mm -hmm. Constitution, mm -hmm. and the people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. The moment that person just says that, and of course, the ethics of the profession, mm -hmm. the legal profession, the rules are not lowered for you. Because, because you are, you are in yeah. public service yeah. and hire for yeah. another person who is in private yeah. service. 
the same situation that you face when you have a as a private lawyer you have a client you should even be higher when you are in public service because there you are also a trustee you understand mm -hmm. so the point is well it is important that that has been set up part of the president's own commitment and campaign which we have accepted but we should not be under any illusion that this office per se without the mm. collaborative not, not only of institutions but all of us mm -hmm. in terms of values i gave an example the other day about how these things are dealt with in. if you go to let's say dubai mm -hmm. they don't have any law that says that a man cannot visit a woman in a in a room in a particular hotel but go there mm -hmm. they will arrest you mm -hmm. and when you ask what is the law i say you are supposed to know mm -hmm. you cannot get pregnant as a woman when you are not married mm -hmm. when i ask but our law says nothing is a crime unless it's in writing and punishment. Mm -hmm. That is not enough. Mm -hmm. then we should have in our minds that there are certain things that are inherently wrong mm -hmm. and they constitute vices, whether or not a particular law provides for it. If we yeah, don't that's the, that's the begin to yeah, hold these yeah. things, which are fundamental, yeah, no institution, yeah. no wishes or desires of any person mm -hmm. will be able to, I mean, will facilitate the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. Then we should forget about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Are you also seeing the same trend that it wasn't just about the person, but it looks like the entire setup, there are some flaws in it? You see, we've come to a, a conclusion, or we've come to a certain decision point as a country, both political divides. And that was reflected in the debate that went into setting up the office. Mm -hmm. That if we don't do something drastic yeah. about the issue of political corruption, corruption yeah. mm -hmm. you understand? Corruption that must be dealt with with an apolitical mm -hmm. lens. This country is heading for a very sad end in terms of the fact that then we must forget about the fight against corruption. Because this cycle of NDC comes into power mm -hmm. today and we turn our eye, on we the, use the, the office the, of the, the Attorney the, General the, 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 to prosecute. Mm -hmm. That's why I said the easiest way of fighting corruption mm -hmm. is a superficial mm -hmm. attempt to prosecute your po political opponents. Of course, that's easy because if you put the police to do an investigation of the uh, forensic audit of the stewardship of your political opponents or predecessors, mm -hmm. you will get a million and one mm -hmm. examples of infractions mm -hmm. of various laws, from the procurement laws mm -hmm. to what have you. What we are looking for is a genuine effort, a systematic effort that not only combats corruption, but prevents it. Mm. That yeah. is part and parcel yeah. of what Amidou's mandate mm. or what he saw his mandate to be. And one of the ways that both parties have agreed is that we need to find persons, resource those offices. The, the, the resources we are talking about, or the independence we are talking about, it's not just about monetary independence. We are talking about operational independence. Mm -hmm. We are talking about administrative, personal, administrative yeah, independence. Yeah. Financial. Who you can, yeah. We need to appoint mm. professionals. Mm -hmm. We need to secure them a tenure of office. Mm -hmm. We need to to have certain things that make it attractive for the and and and, and make it clear mm -hmm. protections. Mm -hmm. You know, because we know the kind of society mm. that we are dealing with. And the persons that have been appointed to fight corruption, I tell you that when you want to fight corruption, corruption would what? Mm -hmm. Fight back mm -hmm. at you. Because clearly, where do the political parties, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. get the money to fund <laughs> their campaigns? Can you tell us? We are having a So don't ask questions. So give give us a The point is this. The point is this. What if if we are serious about fighting corruption, then we must come because we see the consequences of not fighting corruption. The poor roads. Very dire. The fact that as it is, we stay in Accra right now. Our capital, if, you, if it rains and you make the mistake <laughs> of, of driving out, <laughs> you will die. <laughs> you understand? If we don't agree to fight corruption, we can see the result. We've seen nations that have become, oh, yeah. you know, and we don't want to get there. No. But the point is, beyond the rhetoric, are we prepared to take the necessary steps? And so that's why this looked like a fine opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not. It is not a complete failure. Okay. You know, because there is there is a desire, mm -hmm. but we need to reset. 
we need to 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 make a gen if we make the mistake and um, i'm praying and hoping that i've seen the hawks within the the the, the president's party say that this is a death nail in an attempt to do any bipartisan uh, appointments anyway the general secretary of the party has said that for them this proves the fact that you can't go beyond outside your party to appoint somebody no. because conversations that went on between the the uh, the, special uh, uh, the, the special prosecutor and the president mm -hmm. came out so. and that mm. he, he, he if it was a, a loyalist or someone who knew how difficult it was to come into power the president it, himself has realized mm -hmm. that if he does not fight corruption mm -hmm. it could be the downfall of his mm -hmm. own party mm -hmm. he said it that look he he thought the appointment of Martin Amidu mm. would because immediately he knows that there will be miscreants mm. amongst his, mm. his appointees. Yeah. But if he can even one of the things I said on this program mm. when Martin Amidu was appointed was that if for nothing at all, the fear factor yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that look if I did so and he, yeah. he, he showed it that oh, he was prepared yeah. to cut mm. across mm. all ends. Mm. Can we get someone who can look a certain president mm. in the eye? Mm. And tell him that, Mr. President, mm. I'm sorry. I I intend to do what I want to do, mm -hmm. and I do not care what your opinion. Mm. Can we mm. in Ghana oh, get yes. someone mm. well, who can I, look the you president? Not, you not? No, you see, that's the, that's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the point is that we need to be, we need to be honest. If we cannot get someone, mm. and that is why when he was appointed, both sides of the political divide were happy. Whether openly, yeah, we all have our problems. Mm -hmm. Everybody has his problems mm -hmm. because sometimes we feel that look, he talks too much mm -hmm. and does not do, does not take the necessary actions. Mm -hmm. If you feel somebody is corrupt, mm -hmm. take him to court. Mm -hmm. But beyond him, can we get someone mm -hmm. who can look corruption in the face and fight it the way he fought it? I think that is the legacy he leaves. Mm -hmm. I think it's a missed opportunity, mm -hmm. but it is not. It's not. It is not. It is not, it is not uh, too late. Uh, too late. Yeah. The president needs to reflect. He, he doesn't need to look. He needs to look at his legacy. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is it's a legacy fight. Mm -hmm. It's okay. not about what he may achieve immediately. Mm -hmm. But if he cannot even do anything but set up the office in a way that future appointees mm -hmm. can be... We be can all see that, look, running, the, mm -hmm. up and running. Like what Emil Short did yeah, yeah. for Schrapp, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So that anyone who fell short mm -hmm. of his standards mm -hmm. clearly has not lasted mm -hmm. and we can see it that those who have come into the charge position and have dedicated themselves mm -hmm. to fighting the issue of corruption mm -hmm. whether you are in the government no, or outside no, government no, no, no. he left a legacy yes, mm -hmm. if we don't get somebody like that mm -hmm. and we appoint a political lackey mm -hmm. to get into the position we are the same people who suffer well, from the is still around so yeah, yeah, that's we, should, that, that, we, need, still around. we need someone mm -hmm. you see that, that, and, and i say this with a lot of passion because if we don't fight mm. corruption the way we are supposed to fight it, mm. we only risk entrenching it mm. and making it more clear for them mm. it is. So we appoint somebody who we know will protect mm. our own. Mm. Mm. And then in four years, we just, or in six years, we change the person and get somebody else. Seven years. We, uh, seven years, and we change the person and get somebody else who would then, we would just be wasting our time, mm. wasting resources, mm. and wasting everybody's time. Mm. We need that fight this issue and okay. fight it head on so that when you get into public office you know that look there are legitimate ways of of going and conducting yourself in in public office it's either you you get in there and do a right thing or don't get in there at all Absolutely. that should be the fear factor that we should have it's more fight better it. to prevent corruption than to mm. fight it the way we no, want to fight it you know, you know i've witnessed a few um, projects under this administration that were policy-wise not good at all, but politically was being pummeled through. To some extent, you see the vice president was left left in a power. Now, I'm looking at the current project, the Accra Traffic Management, Intelligent Traffic Management hmm. Project. <laughs> now, I bow my head in shape because it looks as if the, we, have, we haven't even reached the plateau yet. And I worry, I shudder to think that if parliaments may have challenges dealing with matters like this, uh, then you need that the institutional, you know, the dynamics of an institution that is able, able, ably, um, that I say, super, so not supervised, resourced, to be able to deal with these things even before they, before they are, they are finalized. Because as I see the Accra uh, traffic, intelligent traffic management project right now. It's a duplication of efforts. Hundred million dollars has been has been already earmarked for the project, but it's being sidestepped willy-nilly. 
and then another contractor is supposed to do the same thing because it's nobody's money. You see, what things what belongs to you, you tend to take care of, but what belongs to others fall into disrepair. And it's a worrying sign. I look at all these multi-million this dollar realistic. projects, this. typically cooked at the presidency, <laughs> not necessarily just this one, mm. but the previous ones as well. So you then go and appoint a special prosecutor, hoping that you'll be able to deal with these things. You are joking, because the people involved, the the the, the levels of political gambitry that goes on when it comes to this type of project. And I'm sorry, I'm speaking from the heart. Mm. I've seen so many of them, and I and I'm wondering whether we actually get capable of fighting corruption. I mean, I. I wonder how it is that some of the projects, not even at Japa. I mean, I'm not at Japa. We all saw it. We knew even before the OSB had this finding that there were some sort of insider trading, conflict of interest. We could live with that, but the valuation itself was not done properly, and that was our worry. So billions of dollars, sometimes millions and, and billions of cities, go into this type of projects, and then we run for soup. Well, somebody decides that, look, I don't need this. Not even when the PPA boss, who incidentally did a very good job on this one, suggested that, look, this Accra traffic thing is wrong. So go and get the deal terminated properly before you can even begin to do it. The vice president goes ahead to say, please, hold on, mm. don't do this, because it's not the best. As I'm reading the report right now, making my notes, um, I'm wondering, uh, publishing it, what at the end of the day, there's some noise, and then everybody goes back to his books. These are the things that I see when the president hears of them. He shouldn't describe those who go after them as dumb squid. Mm. I think part of the president's problem, part of this government's problem, is that the president believed in his appointees too much. I mean, I can understand that well, when you have army, you have know, soldiers on the yeah, court, you need to there should be some support. level of trust. <laughs> yeah, but you see, uh, my point is that the reason why I'm saying this is that, look, we are not necessarily anti-corruption. We look at value for money stuff. Those times when we started this particular advising about certain projects that were being done, they should be cautious, we we'll lose money. As we speak, we are losing close to 200 million cities at the port mm. because because nobody seems to care. The vice president fought it, but only up to a point. Hmm. So I'm seeing a dichotomy between prudence, um, effective technocratic experience, as in managing an economy properly. Hmm. And I hear when Baumia speaks, of course, he's been political as well. But when you speak with him deep down, you understand the very technocratic experience that one needs in order to to unite, to unify the policies that we have in this country. Because, frankly speaking, Bamiya cannot go and be doing QR codes, using it to buy Wachi, to demonstrate that we are doing well, only for somebody else to sit somewhere and say, ah, baby, baby, me, I'm going to do a project that would undo the paperless system, enhance paperless system the vice president promoted, with a steady rise in revenue. So what we are dealing with is not just, you know, the Matamidu debacle is just one of those seeming problems. Of course, the panelists in the studio have said it at the Pinatum. And I think we need to worry greatly. Look, I've been reading, conducted about 25 polls in, in some regions of this country. And the way we do our polls, we, everybody who responds says why they don't like the MP or like somebody. You should see the things people say about MPs. And, the, and by extension, the political parties. You have a thousand and hundred and fourteen people basically tearing the MPs apart in one constituency. Mm. And they're making comments that are real, hard life based mm. issues. So, my point is once you have corruption and it, you know, big corruption, which takes up 25% of Africa's GDP. Mm -hmm. Um, you're actually dismissing lives, really. And I think we need to see it in that light. After all, we are human. Yes, we may be incarnate in, incarnate in terms of our mortal sins, uh, but the point really is that that's why there are structures. And anybody who does not like to use structures um, should not should not deserve our attention. Mm. Amidu has had his days. Uh, I think he was over Silos at that point. But I think that Amidu's problem and the, the problem that this 
portents well, shows clearly is one that suggests that a society has lost its way in terms of writing public grants. You know, I kept telling, I kept saying to you some time ago that if I were President Nanadu, I'll never let the Auditor General issue get to the, 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 the way it got to. Mm. Uh, and then, wasn't it Machiavelli who said that in the print that, well, one of the best ways to make a, a person who is a thorn, a, a thorn in your flesh uh, is to actually give him everything he needs and then behind closed door, actually make him so ineffective that mm. everybody will see that he's actually the one not being effective. Sometimes when you watch the game of thrones, you get a lot of insights. <laughs> was one. Mm. We can only do these things okay. if we are serious about the way we do our power and politics. It's nauseating. <laughs> Here now is 10 million cities to run. Could you correct me? 10 million cities now to run as an MP. What is it about an MP? Um, I don't even want to be one because I know already I'm not even one. When they see me on TV, the demand start flowing. <laughs> So I can put it to you right now. After this call, I'll get us at the course. Mm. So I wonder how people survive as MPs in these days. So we are dealing with a hydra-headed problem. And I think on the public policy side, of, I mean, the gentlemen in the studio have done a lot of good to the, to the subject. Mm. And I think we need to take it from there. Kojo, I think we have to be scheming a lot more together in Hadra. Maybe the constitution is the public. problem. We should probably take a look at it. Yes, we should be skipping. <laughs> yes, I, I have to call it, but positions come as all the time. So if we are skipping, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> I think that's come as, so if we are skipping to skim, yes, use it. The very, so so you are allowing your, your plans to skim? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to band together, together with some of the CSOs, because, and by CSOs, we are going to support that. My point of view, is a supporter as well. And I think we can do these things properly. Look, there are a number of times, um, lawyer, uh, oh, why is the name coming? Lawyer Paul. Lawyer Paul. Mm -hmm. Has reached out to me, say, Charlie, this thing, well, let's take it to court. Let's go and do it. Let's take it to court. Yeah, that is a to you. Yes, I'm not, yeah. not revealing, but you see, yeah, it's not going to be a good Yeah, I'm utilizing it. Oh, and he's not doing that. Let me, let me, let me sound up. Anyway, we, 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 we have, we have a perpetual consent to uh, say things we're no, discussing publicly. No, we're not doing this thing because of the peculiar, peculiar aspect of it. I mean, it's not monetary. Mm. He's saying that test this thing, you know, so that we can That's only restore true. confidence yeah. in our yeah. public policy making. Mm. After this, it also then, reduces then, the so, so there's, the a, there's a new mm. uh, sector prosecutor. Mm. Uh, the social protector will now try to uh, to walk a fine line, be careful. Already the new person ran also because mm. it should be in the shadows of Mati. I mean, people will say, ah, okay, that's a lucky. She should be adventurous like Mati Namidu. Mm. They say, yeah, we got another one. But, you know, it's no time. We'll see when the frog dies. You see the full length. We are dealing with matters that I suspect we could do. Okay, this is a small country. Okay. Mm. So, Charlie. Thank you for that, Franklin. Um, shortly, we'll be talking about the elections uh, 16 days away, but I'm picking more of your messages. Mr. Azombo from La Paz, why is everybody blaming Mr. Amidu? Uh, why not question the government whether or not what Amidu is saying is true? Okay. Lens from Asioso. Uh, the level of depravity in our country is simply mind-boggling. I'm disappointed in everything that's happening between Mr. Amidu and the states. I must say I trust Amidu when he says, you don't tie my hands behind my back and then say I'm a poor boxer that alone speaks volumes. Councillor Edu uh, Kumasi uh, says the cock chews meat, swallow pebbles, yet complains of not having teeth. Then he marks the cow who has teeth but chew only grass, as quoted in the Gosa not to blame. <laughs> I think Martin Amidu <laughs> I think Martin Amidu was given the opportunity uh, to work. He had no strength for because it's only a weak warrior, a uh, warrior who always uses excuses okay in his actions. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, a couple of your messages on Twitter. Charles Otu says, I agree with Nick Papo 
for Parliament to summon Mr. Martin Amidu. But in the same vein, I doubt whether the majority members will allow that, knowing very well that Mr. Amidu threatened, if he's pushed, that it will end in washing their dirty linen in public. Well, if the minority pushes him, <laughs> he won't wash it. <laughs> he, he, he has linen on both. I can imagine. <laughs> Eli, FLS says, listening to you guys, uh, is making me really sad. What happens to our fight against corruption? The way forward. What is the way forward after all these? Okay. Uh, why should President Akufuado and his government wait for almost two years before giving Mr. Martin Amidu his appointment letter? That... The instrument of appointment was given immediately. For mm. me, I think that is more important than mm. another letter. The instrument of appointment is, is legal. Okay. Mm, I think it's on the basis that he worked. Mm. So maybe it, the, um, it was just it, a matter it, it of really administrative procedure mm. for the letter to be given him. He didn't really need that to perform his functions. Okay. With all due respect. Yeah. All right. So w w we've touched on going forward and the recommendations. We can now move on to talk about the elections. Mm -hmm. And it's 16 days away. The Electoral Commission says it is ready for the polls. Over 90% readiness. Uh, that's what the EC is saying. But the NDC is still not happy. It says it does not trust the Electoral Commission to deliver a free and fair general election. Uh, the party says its position is based on the numerous challenges that still exist with the new voters register. And there was an IPAC meeting within the week. Uh, we'll bring you a report on the meeting and also hear from the EC. The Electoral Commission assured political parties that efforts are being put in place to ensure a free and fair election. According to the parties, the Commission says printing of electoral materials is almost complete and transfers to some regions have begun. The IPAC meeting also served as an opportunity for the EC to demonstrate how the biometric verification devices will be used during the 2020 polls, a process the NPP is satisfied with. They demonstrated it for us to know that you could be verified or identified by your fingers by your face, facial recognition, and by if these do not work, then we go to the manual verification. And it was perfectly uh, demonstrated. And I think I must commend the EC for that. The NDC, however, raised concerns with some alleged errors on the register submitted to political parties two weeks ago. Amongst them is the inclusion of some names on the special voting list on the main roll as well as the non-availability of the list of some 531 persons who will vote but are not on the voters register. We felt that that was very disturbing because if that something like that has been identified, we shouldn't be coming to IPAC meeting before you tell us because you've given the register to us about two, uh, over two weeks ago. So you should have informed us that there are some 500 people who do not have their names in the register so that we can track and also check our daily reports. So we have requested immediately that they give us that 541 list so that we can also check with our daily reports to see whether indeed those people registered and their names are not on the register. On security on the day of the polls, the Electoral Commission has been asked by the parties to clarify from the Election Security Tax Force how officers deployed to polling stations can't be identified. It is good that nobody is going to wear mufti and become a security officer. And they have prescribed the uniform that everybody would have to wear. But essential as the prescription that has been given by the IGP is the name tags of the officers and the ID numbers of the officers. That was visibly excluded in the statement. And I think that the, the IGP and the, uh, the Election Security Task Force must make it as a matter of importance to make sure that every officer that is deployed is visibly identified by their names and their ID numbers. With less than three weeks to the general election, the Electoral Commission chief told the Council of State that although ballots for the presidential poll are ready, that of the parliamentary are still being processed. As we speak, distribution of these items to our regions and districts has been completed. And I can confirm that as a result of a thorough planning and distribution process employed, we are almost some 99% done with the distribution of election materials to the various locations across the country. The Commission also denied allegations that some members of the security services 
involved in election policing have been excluded from the special voters list. The commission put in on her register every single person who applied, with the exception of those who had issues with their voters ID cards. In some cases, some of them gave telephone numbers and therefore were able to contact them and get the appropriate card. Some even brought the old ID cards. So this information that is being put out is completely false. On the controversial exceptions list, Jean Mensah said the full list will be published on the Commission's website by Monday. The perception and that impression that sections of the society are seeking to you know, promote that the EC has intentionally removed these persons from the register is, is not true. We intend by law that no portion of the law requires us to publish this list. But in the interest of transparency, the Commission will be publishing this list on the website by Monday. Barring any unforeseen hitches, the Electoral Commission hopes to declare results of the presidential election within 24 hours after the poll. This time we have introduced the regions and we have regional coalition officers who happen to be our di directors. So once they receive the, re the results from the various constituencies, they are also required to collate them on a regional collation sheet and a regional summary sheet and send them within five hours to the National Collation Center at the head office. So we are confident that we should have all the results before the next day, before midnight. The commission says this is possible due to the over 74,000 brand new biometric verification devices available to be deployed to speed up the process and ensure efficiency. 74,800 brand new verification devices are in the country and have been prepared and deployed to our various districts throughout the country. Indeed, the devices as we speak are in the police armories ready and with the intention is that a few days to the elections, they would then be picked up and distributed to the various polling stations. So that's uh, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Madam Jean Mensah, uh, at a meeting with the Council of State yesterday. Earlier, we brought you the concerns of the NDC. Let me begin with you, Dr. Asante. Uh, the NDC has raised a number of issues along the way uh, getting to December 7. And the EC response, it's been a back and forth. What do you make of how their concerns have been managed by the EC with well, this few weeks ahead of us to the polls? Well, I think the, for me, the approach to elections is uh, elections are always a multi stakeholder mm. uh, um, you know, event. Mm. No one person or no one institution can make it successful. And, we, and this is also from experience. I mean, this is my 16th year in uh, a CDD. At least mm. I've done, you know, from 2004. Mm. Mm. You know, I've done elections. This will probably be my what, fourth or so Four elections. Four elections, yeah. And it takes so many things to work to make this happen. So the approach is always to find the space mm. to resolve problems. Because as for problems, okay. they will come in all forms. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to create the environment for people to resolve issues. And also to resolve issues in time. Because you are working with a timetable mm. that, by law, does not change. Mm. Mm. So if you don't get people to make have an understanding of something before and the next uh, electoral activity, it just piles up and piles up, and then it becomes a problem, a big problem. So our intervention always is to make sure that whatever the issue is, make sure it's articulated very clearly mm. and try to deal with it. So in these two weeks or so, uh, uh, the issue of the special voting that came mm -hmm. up, came up uh, I think in Bulga, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the issue of you know you know how to store the, the, the ballot papers yeah. ahead of the yeah. you know the padlock. All, all of these issues <laughs> they, they gone over. The parties know mm. you put a seal on it. Mm. They put it in the armory. Sometimes the armory is too small. They put it somewhere else. But <laughs> you have to have the space to be able to have a consensus mm. and say we are all satisfied that this is secure. Mm. That is always the challenge, and that's why we we always uh, tell the electoral commission that yes, the electoral commission has independence, but you have to accommodate <laughs> or create the environment for 
these types of accommodation mm. whilst insisting on your on your independence mm. and asserting the rules. Mm. And the parties understand the rules. Mm. The parties also have their agenda because there's also, you know, you politicking going on yeah. on these issues. When <laughs> you have to amplify the issues, you know. Sometimes, 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 the even, there, sometimes even it's a way of marketing, you know. You yeah. let people hear about you, mm -hmm. that you are still there. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's managing these things. But for the, for the public, it's always important, no matter the noise, you need to know what exactly is the issue. Mm -hmm. So special voting, it's, it's obvious that there are a lot of people who didn't get their details correct, it wasn't processed. Yeah. There's a timeline. If you pass the timeline, you can't put people on the special voting. Mm. What is going to happen? It's likely for the security agencies, they have to redo their deployment plans. Because if somebody has to be going to Kumase mm -hmm. and he's not on the special voting, yeah. he can't go and vote. Mm. So now, if he's going to Kumasi and he registered in Accra, mm. he has to be in Accra. Mm -hmm. But there are some places where you don't have enough people. Mm. You have to move people. Yeah. Yeah. So it would affect the, their, their, their plans. And they, I'm sure by now they're already reworking. I hear the journalists also had a lot of people who mm. are not yeah. on, on the yeah, list and so on. So these issues, they will come up every special voting. You have sometimes the scale is huge, mm. sometimes it's small. But it has to be dealt with, and there are enough experienced people within the system to know what they did the last election to resolve it. So my appeal always is, yes, let's bring the issue on the table, let's find a solution to it, because uh, time is not on our side. Mm -hmm. I mean, now it's really not on our side. And just keep people more focused on the education bit, what it is that they have to do at the polling station, yeah. mm -hmm. what, how the day is going to go, how results collation and transmission. Now there's a, a regional collation process. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to understand all of that, so that on the day it's not now that people are say, ah, we didn't know that when you finish mm -hmm. constituency, now you have to go here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then people can use that as a way of sort of, mm -hmm. you know, mobilizing confusion and so on and so forth. So I think for me, at this stage, anything that comes up. The Electoral Commission should be very quick, be accommodating, open, mm. and have a discussion and agree, have a consensus, mm -hmm. and then move on. Me, is it a marketing tool or? <laughs> it's, 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 it's more serious than that. You see, we have a situation where the, the special voters list, mm -hmm. the allegation from, from my um, uh, party executives is that reports we are receiving is that about 60 percent of even security personnel do not or cannot find their names on the special voters list the problem because you are but the as the security task force you know i think they no, should but be we, that's the point we yeah. raised the issue yeah. this is the report we've had because okay. remember that one of the, the, the because of the incessant um, 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 agitations that we have made the police service has come out with the prescribed yes, uniforms that's right. for the day, yeah. which is a huge it's a confidence yeah, yeah. booster. Yeah. So we know that anyone who is not, yeah. not in those uh, the, the prescribed police mm. uniform I, with your name tag yes, that's right, yeah. should be treated mm. as a common criminal. Mm. You arrest the person and send it to the police because that person has no business posing as a security personnel mm. Mm. or attempting to have anything to do with the security arrangements for that day. Mm. There is no one in khaki uniform, mm. no brown yeah. uh, 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 uniforms, mm. anyone, even for the yeah, CID. Yeah, the soldiers. Uh, yeah, so yeah, 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 okay. It's those um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ayawa <laughs> that we saw. So, anyone who is not in the prescribed, yeah. but even the CID really? are supposed to be in their vest yeah. with ID cards, cards and, yeah. and everything. So, our uh, political uh, activists and uh, persons connected can challenge mm. and can take on anyone who is not mm -hmm. in, in prescribed. But the problem you have is that if you are deploying persons for election day security operations mm -hmm. and they are supposed to have exercised their franchise mm -hmm. some days before and they have not had the opportunity to do so, the likelihood is that they will find ways of trying to exercise their franchise because they don't want to be disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. They, they have a voice. Their post. And they will abandon their post. Mm -hmm. It will create insecurity all over. 
because they are look on practical election day activities there are places where because you think there will be less problems or the you only assign yeah, one person mm. a fire service official yeah, yeah, yeah. or and they may not be mm, armed mm, mm, mm. and these are high stakes elections mm, mm. if we have the situation where police station on that day uh, put a police station opens and because you know sometimes in the morning everything is all quiet mm. there's no issue it's getting to the mm. yeah. when it's getting it's to, to the, the county, county yeah. Yeah. that you have problems yeah. and you may end up having no one mm. to man the place mm. no one to keep the queue mm. and all that would have problems so we have raised the issue early enough mm. is it true that persons who are especially the security for me the that's where the yeah. I have not been able to find their names on the special voters list. Mm. And what is the EC doing? The chairperson says it's not true. No, and that all the think, names submitted were processed. I, I and think that even is, the, that is the, what electro, uh, the election security task for really mm. yes. should be. Yeah. Because they are going to do the deployment. Mm. Exactly. So, mm. uh, because they, they were the ones that compiled the list yes. yeah. and gave it to the electro. So, if those names are not there, they should be yes, mm -hmm. and, and, and in this instance the AC is saying such a thing has not happened fine so we are we we, we see we also yeah. are on the ground yeah, mm -hmm. sure. so whatever it is we sounded the alarm yeah, and I, sure. at least I, I there's one thing about it is this AC they seem to react to things quickly quickly, quickly yeah. so I haven't seen any statements yeah. mm -hmm. from them in respect of this yeah. I'm waiting to see an official statement mm -hmm. I always monitoring their face they are on mm -hmm. every platform uh, yeah, they, are, they yeah. should put it out mm -hmm. so that we are clear and publish the list as well, if possible. The list is on their website. Yeah, list is the on their website. Okay, so it's it. out now. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's on their website. Good. So all those, especially the security task force, the, the national Elect uh, the election security, security task force, mm -hmm. should issue a statement yeah, yeah, yeah. to that. confirm the fact that mm -hmm. all persons who are to be deployed have had their names on the on the list, mm -hmm. and that they are satisfied okay. that mm -hmm. on the day allocated for the voting by these personnel, mm -hmm. all of them will be able to vote. We are all here. We'll see. No, well, I don't. I don't. I mean, from what I understand, there's no. It's that there are people who did not find their names. Yeah, 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 so, because we, we have. So reports. it's really just a question of how many, and they they, they can't get on now because mm. the Aha. time is gone. It, the time is gone. So it's how, what kind of deployment strategy exactly. they're going to do? Yeah. And because we want to see and know and be sure. <laughs> we don't want any surprises yeah. on election day. So those <laughs> are some of yes. our, our issues that we have <laughs> raised. Well, you see, uh, uh, beneath all this, mm -hmm. this mistrust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that in every aspect of the country, those who, who normally feels that the uh, one Oya is stronger than the other is those who are in opposition, <laughs> and it comes across mm. almost every time one is in opposition, the mistrust in relation okay. to the EC appears to be higher than when. They, um, they are in power, mm -hmm. so to speak. So, but we need to understand that. I mean, we are just going to express our opinion on who should lead us. Mm -hmm. It's a decision making. But I'm looking forward to the day where we may extend this paperless project mm -hmm. to even elections. Mm -hmm. But we must sensitize ourselves that it, it doesn't pay mm -hmm. to even have that level of mistrust. Of a, uh, of a state institution. And the state institutions must also conduct themselves in a way that will not only dispel this mistrust, mm -hmm. but in fact enhance trust that has already been reposed in them. Because we have entrusted our decision-making process in them. Do you think and the Electoral Commission has done that? Well, I think by and large, you've got the, uh, my own people, the Catholic Conference, have mm -hmm. at least uh, in recent times, mm -hmm. and other people mm -hmm. too have said mm -hmm. that they are satisfied to a large extent. Mm -hmm. It's a human institution, mm -hmm. so there may be a few excesses, but I think they should, as Kojo said, also, whilst asserting their independence, also listen and process some of the concerns. It, 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 and to those complaining also, I, I think that this, the, this, there's a extent to which one can also go when you are expressing your misgivings mm -hmm. or concerns about how a state institution is also acting. The Supreme Court made it clear that the decision-making process is at the polling station. Yeah. And that is where the focus must be. Of course, the election, as they say, <laughs> is, a, is a, process a process before the election day. But ultimately, I have always held the view that no electoral commission 
can rig an election in Ghana. <laughs> it is rather the politicians <laughs> the, the, who you, the, 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 rather the, 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 that will lead to rigging. I'm telling you, me, that is my position. It is they who will bring children <laughs> to register them in the first place. It is they who will bring macho men to take to ballot, boxes. ballot boxes away. <laughs> now I hear somebody ask, have you left the beard because you want to put the country? <laughs> 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 I hear that it's a new strategy The woman is an old one. This was the 2008. I hear an aspect is being revived. So if you leave your beard just because you can put some chemicals in it to destroy <laughs> somebody's decision. And normally they won't destroy their own. No. Ah, other person's but, but decision. It's the other oyer who has to suffer. Yeah, <laughs> <it's the other laughs> <laughs> so let us just relax. I think it's also because political <laughs> power in this country is too lucrative. So that people ah. think that without going into politics or their uh, government or person they have sponsored, mm. without them winning an election, that is the end of their life. Mm -hmm. And that is something that has worries me. We must do something about it to the extent that we can allow voting by post. Of course, the US <laughs> example. <laughs> but, but because you see that, of course, if Trump had uh -huh. 213, Franklin, you are there, our friend, had 213, mm -hmm. then for a very long time, he didn't have any left the voting through the day comes, <laughs> and he's not getting. About two days later, he gets one. Uh -huh. uh, the, young, the young man will just complain. It's a stop counting me, unless it's my vote. Me, I, I expect him to tomorrow give Biden a call. That okay. My good friend, he will call him. Come over. He will call him. I will. saw a post where <laughs> two of them are sleeping on the same presidential bed. He will call him. He will call him. He will call him. Transition government. Very funny. But if, if you have to advise your friends to do this for Let's hear from has already conceded this. Trump has not conceded at this time, by the way. I think he should. Anyway, back on to the electoral issues. You know, um, at this stage, I can only wish the Electoral Commission and Daniels well. Because the EC came back to tell us that they'll finish results by within 24 hours. Yeah. Meanwhile, they'll vary everything manually sometimes mm. because some of the machines they have are not. You know, anytime I hear Dr. Swing was speak, and I wonder what exactly is happening at the EC. But let me leave my comments just. Uh, it's very yeah. spicy. It's, it's, it's mostly aggressive. It's mostly aggressive. It's mostly aggressive. He doesn't. He was chatting with her. Who was it on? Uh, I think last six week. Sixtus. Sixtus. And Sander as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I don't last know. week, Sander. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I was listening to the gentleman and I was asking myself, would I hide this person if, in any day? Because he was evasive. He was asked a question, I don't know, this is security. Yeah. Okay, the number, I'll tell you later. Okay, you don't worry. You hmm. know. It doesn't inspire confidence. So I don't know, but uh, look, an election, an African election is an interesting one. And we've done this severally, severally, by the way, and successful as well. The politicians will help at each other. But you see, the management body itself should not have immersed itself into this whole idea of trying to be, you know, trying to be stubborn uh, because they have powers. And I felt that, I mean, the AEC could have done much better, really. They've got a cool um, endorsement from the Catholic bishops. I think the Catholic bishops are very wise. All they are trying to tell the EC is that, well, we hope you actually deliver the elections properly. So they shouldn't carry it like walk up and be running around saying that they've been certified. They should rather focus on delivering the elections properly and stop this manual thing business. Because you see, they are preparing our minds for the failure of the machines, which we spend millions to buy. That's what, that's what they're trying to prepare our minds to for. Anyway, I wish them well. <laughs> <laughs> That's Franklin Kujo, President of Imani Africa. We'll round up our conversation about uh, the Electoral Commission and the elections right after this break. This is a big issue. Don't go away. Looking for something new this November? 
looking for star-studded suspense. It's what rich, entitled people do when threatened. They conceal the ugly truths to protect themselves. Maybe you're in search of true love. Roses are red, violets are blue. I got a crush on you, baby, which you my food. What about a bit of family drama? Need something to keep the kids entertained? We're ready to help with the case, Mira. We'll look for clues. Perhaps criminally good comedy is your thing. Whatever you're in the mood for, look no further than DSTV. This Sunday on the Upside Down Show, we have a conversation with some young people improving literacy amongst the youth in your community with their mobile library, Library Without Walls. And later, get ready to be taken to church by award-winning gospel artist Joe Metal on the Upside Down Show. This Sunday at 7 p.m. only on City TV. Upside Down is proudly brought to you by Vodafone Ghana. The future is exciting. Ready? Ghana goes to the polls on December 7th and City TV gets to work. From 6 a.m. on December 7th, bringing you all the action and reports with our correspondents covering all 275 constituencies. Be assured of exhaustive and definitive coverage of Ghana's 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections. Our team of seasoned journalists will dissect the issues and give minute-by-minute -minute account of the election. Bernard Avler, Vivian Kai Loko, Kojo Akoto Boateng, Nathan Kwa, Frema Edwinyame, Abena Nyameche Ampedu, Salom Adonu, Umaru Sanda Amadou, Zoe Abu Beidou, Duke Mensa Opoku, Nana Tufo, The Election Bureau, Ghana's Election, Covered. Coverage starts at 6 a.m. on December 7th on City TV and 97.3 City FM. You're welcome back to The Big Issue on City FM and City TV. This is your election bureau, of course. We'll be keeping you updated and bringing you that comprehensive coverage of the December 7 polls right here on City FM and City TV. Dr. Asante, I'd like us to talk about preparedness. Sure. I know CDD does a lot of work mm -hmm. on elections, among yes. other things. Are we ready? Well, as, as ready as, I mean, uh, the ballot materials are already in the regions. I, I think I understand there are two or three regions that mm. uh, they have to deliver. So, I mean, that's that's positive. Mm. Um, they, they yet to move to the districts. Maybe that will happen next week. Mm -hmm. um, I think the security agencies finally mm. <laughs> are, are getting ready because I, I was worried that they had not engaged the... The candidates and you know both parliamentary and presidential early enough mm. uh, because often the election security tax laws you know would begin the system once the nominations are done they become official you know then you begin to work out security arrangements but that has happened now so there's that uh, understanding um, I think the media is, is ready um, uh, most of you have done your recruitment civil society are ready uh, will be deploying uh, Kodeo, 4,000 observers. Mm -hmm. um, so I think generally um, most people are, are ready. The international observers are already in, at least those who have come. The, the, the challenge, as I said, going into the election for me is always um, the resource coalition. On the mm -hmm. day, uh, there will be a lot of monitoring. Everybody will monitor. By the time the polls end, between that and the announcement, that's where there's a lot uh, that has to be done uh, in terms of just, you know, sharing information and trying to respond to sometimes misinformation that happens. Because 
<laughs> we are hoping that the parties are not going to be declaring results mm -hmm. or calling results mm -hmm. <laughs> if you but considering what happened in 2016 you know you you want to you know but we are hoping that mm -hmm. Uh, that will not happen just you know that it, it creates the, the confusion uh, that will happen <laughs> well, I, I don't like the fact that he's laughing <laughs> 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 it's, it's kind of yeah, giving it's, it's it's like, well, it me we know what it we do it gave me, it gave me some, uh, some concern you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but those, those, those issues because um, I mean, when it, issues around uh, violence and conflict, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, politics in, uh, can be very local. Mm -hmm. Some of the issues are coming from the voter registration. Mm -hmm. They've not been resolved. Yeah. We always call the police that if we didn't expedite action on that, people will feel peeved that, you know, uh, people have gotten away with it. So those flashpoints, I think it was 4,000 or so yeah. that the, the police... Uh, raised mm -hmm. about policy, but there's mm -hmm. some constituencies that really are are volatile, and we have mm -hmm. to look at it. And the presence of security personnel mm -hmm. is important because we've gone through a lot of discussion around mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Even for observers, it's something that we worry. Mm -hmm. I mean, the city survey: 71 percent wanted armed security yeah. personnel. Mm -hmm. This is the centers. first time that this, you know, kind of uh, issue has come up, and it can be counterproductive because. Yeah. One person with a gun, yeah. if they are overpowered, intimidation mm -hmm. you, you are going to have a problem. So, mm -hmm. these are issues that we are so concerned about. But you see, you always, it's all about the, the Ghanaian yeah. and what kind of education they get mm -hmm. ahead of the election. A lot of these things is getting an understanding of the mm -hmm. process. And that's why the education is important. Mm -hmm. People need to know what is happening. So that they don't have to rely on second-hand information about what is happening mm. for them to react. I was just coming to that about public education sure. ahead of the elections. Yeah. I mean, I'm, the I'm next two weeks is going to be. Any. I think I've seen NCC doing mm. a bit on social media. Uh, no, I think I've heard, I've seen uh, videos. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, video and some audio yeah. as well. Mm. But it has to intensify. Normally, I think two weeks is going to intensify. Mm. But also the parties, the parties are so critical. Mm -hmm. What it is that they tell uh, their supporters and the activists, like in the police case, for example, mm -hmm. which what's the uniform? How is it going mm -hmm. to look like? Mm -hmm. uh, who, what role people have at the polling station? Mm -hmm. Who's allowed there? And all of, so that when you see something happening, even yeah. the COVID protocols mm. yes. and how they're going to be enforced. Yeah. Yeah. We seem to forget time. that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, are, we are doing it in the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. People are forgotten. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, for, so people, for example, will get there, they don't have a mask on. Mm -hmm. And if somebody decides to turn them away, yeah. problem. it could be a problem. So, the education around what is going to happen on the day, how the day is going to. We go, have free mask. Has to be. Uh -huh. All of those things have to be put in place. And people have to know that they are in place so that we don't get a problem on the way there's a misunderstanding mm -hmm. that oh they are trying to you know prevent us from voting mm -hmm. uh exceptions list multiple the, the, lists the, the names of those that have been expunged yeah that's, what I'm, saying. that's yeah. what I'm saying the, the, the exceptions list the multiple list all of those things what does it mean mm -hmm. when you are on that list when you get there what happens what do you do? these are all very important we are hoping that the media can join us you know, it's not just the stories of mm. special mm. voting or whatever, mm. but mm. use the next two weeks to be going through some of these processes and educating the Ghanaian. Mm. Okay. Um, like your poem. Yes. And that will be your final yes, one. I Maybe you can also so. touch on the 24-hour uh, results. Oh, well, I think um, well, uh, I was um, excited to see it. You know. <laughs> I wasn't really <laughs> sure, but I thought that it may have been or should have been. Mm -hmm. We may be you able think it's to. Uh, overly ambitious. I think the, um, the assurance mm -hmm. bit, mm -hmm. which had been carried in the front page of graphic, mm -hmm. may, may, may it in itself mm -hmm. cause too much apprehension mm -hmm. and excitement that to the extent goes. that if it is not met, mm -hmm. then it is going. It may give room to people's suspicion to be heightened. Uh, um, especially with COVID, there is going to be distance. Mm -hmm. It may reduce the um, the time, mm -hmm. or it may enlarge the time within which it would have been done mm -hmm. if it had not been we were not in COVID. So okay. I think that 
they may just have to clarify that mm -hmm. maybe we will be able to deliver results from some of the results from within 24 hours mm. and so on. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> the last time, according to the constitution, when the, the election ma must um, commence, is seventh. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that you should end it on the seventh. Mm -hmm. It can go beyond that, and that is why even if there is a runoff, it can even go into January. Okay. Anyway, so but in conclusion, let me just speak to the voting public. Mm -hmm. It doesn't pay to lay down your life for any mm -hmm. politician. Mm -hmm. It doesn't pay to even lay down your life because you were not, your principle to vote for someone is being threatened. Mm -hmm. It is even better to stay safe at home than to risk your life mm. and the life of money. You will not get any insurance for mm. that. Mm. No insurance in any case can replace serious injury to you mm. or the loss of your life. Well said. Let us just go there peacefully. When we start practicing that culture, it will come to a time that electronic voting mm -hmm. will not be even strange to yeah. us. Okay. And let us trust that no politician will allow his child to even die for himself <laughs> or herself. <laughs> Me, finally from you. <laughs> oh, I think that we have a duty as citizens of no, this country. No, 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 no. I'm coming to you, Kwame. <laughs> <family. laughs> you have, you have okay, now you're interrupting his time. Please go ahead, I'll come to you. I'm moving to come to the city. We have a duty as citizens of this country to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. The whole idea and principle is this. Every legitimate vote must be counted. <laughs> The votes that are, that are legitimate and counted <laughs> must be the results that are declared okay. and reflected. Mm -hmm. Once that is done, everybody would abide because mm -hmm. if every voter's vote mm -hmm. is counted mm -hmm. and the results properly collated and legitimately announced, mm -hmm. and you can see that that is the clear will of the people, everyone will not have a problem. Okay. But any attempt to manipulate the results. Mm -hmm. and to, it can and only to, be done by the politicians. Not, not, not so, not necessarily <laughs> okay. so. And to, and to make sure that the will of the people is not uh -huh. reflected mm -hmm. would be resistant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I want, I'm worried that in this election, the election, it has been more about the electoral commission than the issues per se. Yeah. And that, that is sad. Um, yeah. I think see, between myself, ourselves, the man, CDD, and a number of civil society actors. We've done a lot of good in terms of dissecting the political manifestos mm. and done all of those stuff. Mm. Yeah, well, occasionally here it's being discussed here and there. But anytime anything electoral comes up, it's either the EC is doing something, is telling people, somebody halfway that, or he's doing something like that. <laughs> I mean, this whole thing. So look, I, I'll come aside with you. Mm. Everybody should go out there and exercise their franchise properly and be vigilant as well okay thank you so much for wrapping it up for us my name is Abna Nyamesha Ampedu I was your host for the big issue for today I was here with Ni Papu Samwa a member of the NDC he's a lawyer as well Franklin Kujo president of Imani Africa Yao Po is a private legal practitioner and Dr. Kujo Asante director of advocacy and policy engagement at CDD Ghana thank you so much for your time uh, keep watching City TV and listening to City 97.3 FM goodbye <music>